And after this conversation, you and he broke up, right? Yes, after he got back from Borrego Springs. Pardon? After he returned from Borrego Springs, that's where he was that night. Okay, he, he came up and where, what town did you meet in? Phoenix, is that where you met? Yes. And that's when you decided to, that was the end of it, right? You decided that, right? Um, I don't remember, it was just a lot of tears and it was obvious that the trust was gone and there was not any kind of relationship anymore. And basically that's the same reason why you and Mr. Uh, Alexander broke up because according to you, the trust was gone, right? That's right. Yes, another recurring theme in her life. I wonder how many more men would have broken her trust if she had stayed free. More to the point, how many of those men would have lost their lives as a consequence. <laughs> Hello YouTube and Odyssey. Hi everyone. And welcome to the episode that you all have been waiting for. This is part 25 of our Jodi Arias, the Wicked Witch of the Weird series. Oh yeah. Can't uh, this... wait to get into this one. Me neither. This is the one where Jodi um, is cross-examined by Juan Martinez. This is the first day. And it's uh, it's going to be a really, really interesting ride, this one. Yeah, this is our first time ever watching it, so... Yeah. <laughs> we we know loads of you in in the chat in the comments you, you tell us how many times you've watched this we know how overtly familiar some of you you know some of you are with it this is our first time we are um voyagings to this particular part aren't we we certainly are so please bear with us we may get some stuff wrong we may you know think stuff is happening when it isn't um we will find out in due course speaking of which uh, last video, just want to put something straight. We kind of wondered how Jody could afford to rent all these cars on a waitress's salary. Um, and you guys came back, as you always do, with common sense, and you said, credit cards. Which didn't occur to us because neither of us have a credit card or ever have had a credit card, have we? No, and no. I wouldn't. No. We, we both kind of, you know, stay clear of that sort of thing, you know, credit cards. So... Um, yeah, thank you for that. It, you know, the most obvious answer, it didn't occur to us, did exactly. it? Exactly. Um, so, yeah, our usual disclaimers, as Shah said, Shah said early, this is the first time we're watching this. Uh, we will be interrupting this with our commentary. If you'd like to watch the original footage on David Lower's channel, we will provide the link to the original video in the description. Also, we are not professionals. We don't say we are. We just two ordinary people who look at the evidence and just call what we see. Yeah, we don't have any training in any body language, any detective techniques. We just ask if it makes sense and if it flies. And uh, it doesn't. Half of the usually. time. Most of the time it doesn't, especially with Jody. So uh, strap yourselves in, people. We know you've been looking forward to this. Um, and we guarantee this is going to be a hell of a ride for all of us. Let's do this, yeah? Oh, yeah. Please rise for the <clears throat> Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Ms. Arias, you are still under oath. Do you understand? Yes. Um, Mr. Martinez, you may cross examine. Yeah, take a look at exhibit. 413. You recognize that exhibit, correct? Yes. And that's a picture of you, correct? Yes. Right here. And the other one is a picture of your dumb sister, Angela, correct? Right, so we are less than 40 seconds into this testimony and already he's got us both falling about. <laughs> God, oh my, you can tell he's been itching to do this, can't you? Oh, definitely. Oh my God, bring it on. Oh, yeah. That's my sister, she's not done. Well, do you remember having a conversation with Travis Alexander back on May 10th of uh, 2008? Yes. And do you remember that you tape recorded that conversation? Yes. And during that conversation, isn't it true that you said, but I honestly think Talking about Angela, she's a little bit dumb. You said that, right? 
Yes, I called her dumb and stupid. Did I ask you whether or not you called her stupid, ma'am? No. I asked you whether or not you called her dumb, right? Yes. Now take a look at the... No leeway. And no wiggle room. Oh, God. We are going to enjoy this. Oh, yeah. Exhibit 452. Do you recognize the two people there? That was taken on May 10th. We'll bring it in. Of 2008, right? And this yes. photograph here, exhibit number 413, features the color of your hair, doesn't it? Yes. Exhibit 452 also features the color of your hair, doesn't it? Yes, a different part of my hair. And this was taken sometime in May of 2008, correct? This exhibit? No, exhibit number 452. I only remember it was the spring, I think. Of 2008? Yes. Now take a look at uh, the back of exhibit 452. It contains a date on there. Does that date refresh your recollection as to when this photograph was taken? Yes. And what date was this photograph taken? Five days later, the 15th of May, 2008. And with regard to this photograph, it also features you, and it also features your sister, the one that you also said was stupid, correct? Now, yes. with regard to this name calling, one of the things that uh, we heard through a text message was that you were upset at some point because Mr. Alexander said that you were going to turn out like your mother or you were acting like your mother. Do you remember that text message, man? Yes. And in that text message, there was this indication that somehow he was saying something bad about your mother, right? Yes. And when you testified, you seemed to get pretty upset about that, right? I remember getting emotional. And you indicated that you loved your mother, right? I do love my mother, yes. Did you or did you not indicate that you loved your mother? I'm not asking you if you love your mother. I'm asking you if you indicated it. I don't remember. Do you have problems with your memory, man? Sometimes. Yeah, it's called being selective and talking us a crap. I mean, we've just had like, what? seven episodes of her doing that absolutely yeah so you can tell us for example what kind of coffee you bought at starbucks back on june 3rd of 2008 but you can't tell us what you said yesterday or the day before i always got the same drink at starbucks and you can tell us for example what type of sex you had with mr alexander many years ago but you're having trouble telling us what you said a couple of days ago when i'm under stress yeah it affects my memory I thought you said the relationship with Mr. Alexander was very stressful. Some of the sex wasn't. Pardon? Some of the sex wasn't. So you did enjoy the sex then, is that what you're telling me? At but times You did indicate at some point that... What an absolute contrast in styles between attorneys. Oh yeah. Like we said last episode, Nermi's like a sloth, isn't he? He's just smooth like a, like a tortoise and asks questions so slowly. Martinez is like a... He's like a Gatling gun, ba 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 he? Yeah, but you also got to remember that Martinez has sat there for seven days straight listening yeah. to her crap. Absorbing all of this and thinking, oh, let me at her. Yeah. yeah. But it's just the, the difference in their styles. They're, they're like chalk and cheese. They're completely they like chalk and cheese. Of course they are. As part of your examination, also that... Mr. Alexander at some point said something about your grandparents also. Do you remember telling us that? My grandfather. Right. That he made some pejorative comment or some bad comment about him, right? Yes, his name. Right. And some of the, one of the things that seems to be coming out here is that you seem to have a double standard here with regard to making comments about people, don't you? Yes, I do. I do. And in fact, it's okay for you to make comments about, for example, Angela and call her dumb and stupid, right? No. Well, but it's, you said it, right? I did. And we heard on the telephone conversation that you were laughing when you said that, right? Yeah, it was sentimental, kind of. Cast your mind back, it was only a few episodes to that um, phone call that was recorded. If you're you know gonna say something like that and it's affectionate or, or sentimental you call them a daft bugger or a klutz or something you know what i mean not not anything as really severe as dumb and stupid well yeah i mean calling someone dumb and stupid is really hurtful and spiteful yeah 
and it didn't sound at all affectionate or sentimental when she said it did did it no she was kind of laughing yeah twisting the facts isn't she as usual oh yeah you were laughing you weren't upset when you said it were you no and then when mr alexander says something like you're going to be like your mother that's when you get emotional and upset right I did. And that's when you and you get upset when he says something about your grandfather, right? That night I was upset. And well, you did get upset, yes or no? Um, no, because I was already upset. Well, you didn't get upset on the witness stand when you told us about it. Oh, that? yeah, on the witness stand, certainly. And so it just seems that it's okay, unless it's Miss. It's okay to say these things unless it's Mr. Alexander that's saying them, right? So no, you're applying a different saying. standard to Mr. Alexander, correct? No. Yes or no? No. And ma'am, one of the other things that we know with regard to this standard applying and that sort of thing is back yesterday, as a matter of fact, you told us that back in August of 2007, you went over to Mr. Alexander's house. Do you remember telling us that? Yes. And you remember telling us that, that at, time, at that time, you were broken up with Mr. Alexander, right? Yes, I had broken up with him. Well, you'd broken up with him or he'd broken up with you? One of the two, right? I broke up with him right. about a month ago. And, and you broke up with him on June 29th of 2007, right? Yes. But you felt that it was okay for you to go over to his house in August of 2007, didn't you? After he told me yes. yes or no did you feel it was okay to go over to his house I said yes and when you went over to his house you indicated that you knocked or you did something and that nobody came to the door right I don't I went to his house a lot in August so it depends on the incident I'm talking about the incident that you told us about yesterday do you remember the one that you related that involved the killing do you remember telling us about that I did not knock if what we've heard so far is any indication he is not going to settle for anything less than a straight answer from her, is he? Well, no, I mean, last seven days she's gone off on tangents and there's no way he's going to let that happen. And there was no way that Nermi was going to pull her back off those tangents. He was just willing to let her go wherever she wanted. It was down to Martinez to object, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And every time he did, Nermi would mumble some sort of defence about, you know, I'm oh, just so glad that's over. But, um... Yeah, like we said before, he's not letting her have any wiggle room. And look at him, he's getting so animated. He's waving his arms about, he's pacing. He is. I think he's agitated and angry. Well, don't forget, he was at the crime scene, so he's, he's got a it. lot invested in this. Yeah, he Because has. once you see something like that, you don't unsee it, oh, do you? Of course you don't. So, something that's so horrific. Yeah. So seven days or seven episodes really of his nearly be eight episodes, I think it was, of his nearly being driven mad by her gaslighting and virtue signaling. Um, I think we're just about to have some sanity restored, aren't we? We are. Yeah. And you did go over there and at some point you started to peep in to the house, didn't you? Yes. So that means that you don't know if you knocked though, right? I did not knock. I know I did not. So you went around the back then to look, right? I went around the back to get in. You went around the back then, right? Yes. And when you went around the back, you're telling us you went around the back to get in, right? Yes. But when you got to the back to get in, you started to look at what was going on, right? I glanced in as I was walking to the sliding glass door. You did walk in and you were looking at what was going on, right? I did not walk in. Then you were from outside looking in, right? Yes. Never went in, right? No, I ran out of the backyard. You never went in, yes or no? I said no. And when you went and looked, you saw something that upset you, right? Yes. You saw Mr. Alexander, right? I didn't know it was him at first, yes or but no. yes. Did that you see him me. during that encounter? Him. Pardon? I didn't know it was him at first. You didn't see him when you were there that night? I did afterward, yes. That night, ma'am, listen to my question. That night, did you see Mr. Alexander inside that house, yes or no? Yes. Bloody hell, how long did that take? Oh, I could listen to him do this all day. <laughs> and inside that house, there was a female, right? Yes. What's the name of the female? He didn't tell me her name. I'm asking that, did I ask you if he told you the name? No. 
So, did you recognize her? No, I did not. And he was there with the female, though. You were able to see her face, though, right? Yes, sort of. Well, yes or sort of means two different things. Yes or no, were you able to see her face or not? Part of it was shadowed from the yes TV no, behind her, so I saw part of it. Judge, she's not answering my question, if you can instruct her. Ms. Arias, listen carefully to the question and answer only the question you are asked. Okay. You may continue. Could you see her face, yes or no? Part of it. Oh my God, she's real. God, I know. What's she doing? It's okay. It's okay. Just, just swallow this, because uh, she's not going to stand up to this. She's not. She's going to crack some. She thinks she is a match for Martinez right now, and she's not. She is in no way, shape, or form a match for him. Right, but she thinks that she's able to take him on and win. <laughs> she's trying to argue with him. Just like she s slowly nearly destroyed our sanities, I think we should watch her character get completely destroyed with a big smile on our faces now. Oh, yeah. And, but you were able to see that they were making out, right? Oh, yeah, they were. And so is that a yes? They were making out, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes. And part of what you also saw was that her brazier was off, right? I did not see that. I just saw her rehook her bra. Pardon? I didn't see it all the way off. It just you saw you her indicated that you saw her hooking the brazier back on, right? You she told was us that yesterday, it. yes? She was rehooking it, yes. So you did tell us that yesterday, right? Yes. So that means that at least that the, her bra was unhooked, right? It was unhooked. And you stood there and they stood up in reaction to something that you did? Is that what you're telling us? No. They didn't see you? They didn't see me. But you saw, you, so the poor, so what happened then is you actually were watching what they were doing then, right? Briefly, yes. Did I ask you for how long, ma'am? No. I asked you if you stood there and watched them, right? No. You, you didn't stand there and watch them? I didn't stand there. I saw it and then I turned it around out of the so backyard. You, but you saw enough to know that they were kissing, right? Um, yes. You used the term making out, didn't you, yesterday? Yes. You, you were there long enough to see that one of the B individuals was Mr. Alexander, not his roommates, right? Yes. You were able to see that it was a female, right? Yes. You were able to see that the bra was unhooked, right? Yes. And there were, the lights were on, right? There was a light. Well, didn't you indicate that it was like a TV kind of light? That, that light, on? yes. Right? So there was no light, there was a television that was on, right? That's light. Man. Was it a light or was it a television that was on? It was light from a television screen. So, are you saying that it was a television that was on then? Yes. And from that light, you were able to make all of this out, correct? Yes. No other light was on, right? Not that I recall. And then you decided to leave, right? Yes. And this was at the point that you were living very close to Mr. Alexander, right? No. Well, you were living within 10 miles of him, weren't you? Um, I was living by Greenfield and Broadway. I don't know the length. How long would it take you to drive that? About 15 minutes, depending on traffic. And after you saw this, one of the things that you did was that you took off, right? Yes. And then you thought about it, right? Of course. Mm -hmm. And you felt strongly enough about this that the next day you called your father, right? I called my parents' house and my yeah, dad. Yes or no, you spoke to your father. I did speak to him. And you were crying, right? Yes. And you were upset about this, right? Yes. And you told him why you were upset, right? Yes. I thought you said before that you didn't discuss these issues involving you and Mr. Alexander. Not typically. Not typically. You said you didn't yesterday and all the days before. You remember telling us that? The violence, yes. Oh, I see. So, but you did discuss the fact that you saw him kissing with somebody else with your father, right? Yes. And as a result of that, you decided to go talk to Mr. Alexander about it, right? Yes. What in the world gave you the right to go talk to an ex-boyfriend with who, according to you, you'd broken up with? What right do you have to do that? Objection, Your Honor. Sorry, we're going to do Stevens may have sustained that objection, but it is a completely valid point. She had no right, did she? Absolutely not. The only right that she thought she had is because she thought he was hers. Ma'am, 
feel that you could go and talk to him about that? Of course. Why? Weren't you broken up? Yes. You were being territorial about him, weren't you? No. Oh, you weren't? Then why in the world did you, would you even care what he was doing? Because he was trying to court me back. That's you telling us that he was trying to court you back. If he's trying to court you back, he could have just walked away at that point, couldn't you? Yeah, I could have at any time, I guess. I can't say no. Well, you, at that point, you could have walked away, right? Yes. You didn't need him for his paycheck, right? Because he wasn't giving you money, right? He was giving me money. Well, that was for some work, but you could have gotten other work, right? I guess I could have looked. You guess? You worked at other places. You know you could have gotten other work, couldn't you? Not in August. It's very slow season for restaurants. So I you're did. saying that you were restricted in only getting work at restaurants, that there's no other kind of work that you could get? Restaurants is... Yes or no? I guess that would be no, but I hadn't thought about it. So then, in addition to that, you were living in your own place, right? No. Well, you were living with Mr. Alexander? No. You were living elsewhere, weren't you? Yes. You were living in another place, right? Yes. Where you were paying rent, right? No. You weren't paying any rent at all? Not with Rachel. So, in other words, it was even better for you. You didn't even have to worry about having to pay the rent then, right? Yes. And so, you could have just left that situation alone, but you decided to confront him anyway, right? Of course. And the reason that you did it is because you were jealous, right? No. So we've just been sat here, haven't we? And we've been trying to figure out a reason why anyone would confront their ex <laughs> about being with another woman other than jealousy. And I've got to admit, we came up with a few, didn't we? But nothing that was really credible. Yeah. Could have been like, she might have been trying to warn him away from Lisa. Yeah, but she didn't know Lisa. She no. didn't know Lisa enough to kind of... The only other reason she could warn him away from Lisa is to make something up about Lisa. Right, so she, that's, that isn't viable. She could be trying to warn Lisa away from Travis by saying that he was violent, but we all know that's crap. We don't know what she's going to say next, but we're just trying to come up with a viable excuse as to why you would confront your ex... For any other reason than jealousy when he's with someone else. Well, and we can, can't really, can we? It could have been that, you know, they made a promise to each other not to sleep with anyone else. Who the hell does that? Exactly. That is not realistic. And remember, with Travis here, we're talking about someone who I think had a very high libido. Yeah. So, but this is just getting more and more clownish isn't it and more and more outlandish i mean we we're what we're only a very short way into this and already she thinks that she's very confident and th she thinks she's holding her own but she's just she's just starting to give really stupid answers and it's quite amusing to watch isn't it oh yeah she's losing it yeah and then you did talk to him about this issue correct yes and he got upset with you right no he didn't get upset and scream and run upstairs? Isn't that what you told us yesterday? Yes, he did. So, ma'am, to go back to this issue involving the text messages, one of the things that you told us was that there was a text message that you sent to somebody by the name of Steve, Steve Carroll, right? Yes. Yeah, and according to our subs and our viewers, this guy was a complete fabrication and invention of hers. Ah, right. Just to make him jealous. Stupid old cow. And that it was a two-part text message, right? Yes. And this two-part text message, one part ended up going to Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. And that he got upset about it, right? Very, yes. And after he got upset about it, one of the things that he wanted was to see the second part of this text message, right? Yes. And so you lied to him at that point, right? No. Well, you fabricated a second text message, didn't you? After that point, yes. So, do you, are you telling me that fabricating a text message is not a lie? No, I'm not saying that. So you did lie to him, Mr. Alexander, right? I, I, 
Um, yes and no. Can't she just give a yes or a no? Well, she gave a yes and a no then, didn't she? Which is bloody stupid. And I'm sure she did that just to completely annoy the person asking the question. So you think that sending him that text message and telling him this is the second part of the text message, that that's not a lie even though you fabricated it? That part was the lie. And so you then were asked the question, well, how did that make you feel when Mr. Alexander was sending you these text messages involving Mr. Carroll. Do you remember though that line of questioning? We're applying yes. a different standard here then, right? Objection argumentative. With regard to this issue of how you feel, isn't that the same way that you felt when you were peeping in his window? in August of 2007, isn't that the same kind of feeling that you were having? The same as what? As the one involving Steve Carroll. I don't know. You were mad at Mr. Alexander both times, weren't you? I wasn't mad at Alexander. You weren't mad at him, or you were upset with him then, right? At what time? Either time. Steve Carroll, no. The girl from Phoenix, yes. And. So it just seems that it's okay for you to lie to him about a guy, but when it comes to him being with some other girl, you decide to confront him, right? Yes. And one of the other things that you told us uh, yesterday was that you were monogamous with Mr. Alexander, right? Sexually monogamous, yes. Ma'am, you, you told us you were monogamous, and that's what monogamous means, sexually, doesn't it? I think it means more than that sometimes. Well, in this case, monogamous means sexually, doesn't it? Objection, this characterizes it Restate your question. When you say monogamous, it means sexually, doesn't it? Which time? What we're ta the time that we're talking about right now, involving Mr. Alexander, no other time. Our relationship evolved, so. I'm not asking you if it evolved. At the end, right when you killed him, you indicated that you were monogamous with him, right? Yes. And at that time, you then left the killing scene, if you will, and you went up to Utah, right? Yes. And when you went up to Utah, ma'am, you ended up with somebody by the name of Ryan Burns, right? Yes. And you ended up in his bed, right? I think it was a love sack. Okay. And with regard to that, at that point, according to you, Mr. Alexander still wasn't dead, was he? It wasn't discussed. Well, did I ask you whether or not you discussed it with Mr. Burns? I didn't, did I? I wasn't talking about Mr. Burns. I'm asking you, at that time, didn't you tell us yesterday, at the time that you went up to Utah, you weren't sure if he was dead? Do you remember telling us that? We certainly do, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do. I mean, how could she not think he was dead after what she did to him? She knew he was dead. Of course she did, yeah. And like we said, you know, the last episode, she was fist pumping. Not in Utah, from the Hoover Dam, or right before the checkpoint. So, when did you know that he was dead? Tell me that. Well, I got confirmation of it on June 10th, but... So, okay, if you got confirmation on June 10th, you, uh, you met with Mr. Burns, what, before June 10th, didn't you? Yes. You met him on the 5th, right? Yes. And so, at that point, you didn't know, according to your own story, that Mr. Alexander was dead, right? I guess I knew... Fuck off! I didn't ex wasn't accepting it. You either knew or you didn't. Which one is it, ma'am? Make up your mind, please. Objection. Ask an answer. Ask another question. Did you know he was dead when you were Mr. Burns and he were kissing? Objection. Ask an answer. This is the same question. Over. Um, yeah, I think I did. And no doubt got off on it. You think you did, but you're not sure at that point. I don't, it wasn't really in my own mind. I was out of my mind, sort of. So kind if of. you didn't think he was dead, if that portion of you didn't think he was dead, then it's okay for you, at that point, if you didn't think he was dead, to sort of roll around with Mr. Alexander, then, with Mr. Burns. 
then that was okay, right? I'm single. You're single? Yeah, and you're also a filthy, cold-blooded murderer. Right? Just like he was on August 7th of 2000, um, um, August 8th of 2000, in August of 2007, right? Yes. So it's okay for you, then it should be okay for him, right? It was okay. Then why did you confront him the next day if it was okay? Because he was still courting me. I wanted to know where I stood. And so because of he was still, your definition, courting you, you felt that you deserved an explanation, right? Yes. Didn't, hadn't you just had intercourse with Mr. Alexander on the 4th of June? Yes. And if he was still alive, he would have deserved an explanation then for you being with Mr. Burns, right? No. Well, no, isn't, aren't we, that's, you're applying a different standard here, aren't you? No. You're saying, one, it's okay for you to confront him about the situation, but not okay for Mr. Alexander to confront you, right? If he wanted to confront me, it would have been okay. Do you know something? It's just occurred to me we are now seeing why she is so alone and has been all her life, why she has no close friends. This is why. Because of the, this attitude, because of this personality, because of who she is. She is a loser. She always will be. Yeah. She's a loser at keeping men. She's a loser at keeping friends. She is a loser at life. And you know something? I can't even muster up the energy to feel pity for her. I wouldn't. Ma'am, with regard to the exhibit number 452, it does show you, right? Correct? Yes. And it shows again Angela, correct? Yes. It shows something else on there, though, doesn't it? Doesn't it show your hand? Yes. And in fact, let me show you another close-up of that hand. Exhibit 453 is a close-up of your hand, right? Yes. And it's and you can also see the jewelry around your sister's neck. Yes. Exhibit 453, correct? Yes. And you previously have, have told us about Exhibit 452 and when it was taken and who's in that photograph, correct? Yes. I move for the admission of Exhibit 453. No objection. Well, ma'am, this was also taken according to your testimony on May 15th. Let's take a look at that of 2008. That's a picture of your left hand, isn't it? Yes. And that shows your ring finger, right? Yes. Do you remember that you testified that on January 22nd of 2008, you and Mr. Alexander were involved in some sort of violent encounter? Do you remember telling us about that? Yes. And you told us that during that encounter, he threw you down. Do you remember that? Yes. And while you were down, that he kicked you, right? Yes. And when he kicked you, ma'am, one of the things that happened was that you put up your left hand. Do you remember telling us that? Yes, both hands. Well, you told us specifically about your left hand, right? Yes. And when you went to put up your left hand, according to you, he kicked you and he damaged your ring finger on the left hand, correct? Yes. And in fact, you even held it up for us, didn't you? Yes. And it was crooked when you showed it to us, wasn't it? It's bent, yes. It's bent. Show us how bent it is again, ma'am. It's higher, so we can see it sideways. Ma'am, if he caused that damage on January 22nd of 2008, that would have been before this picture that we have here, which is exhibit number 453. It would have been about five months before that, right? It was before that. Mm -hmm. Five months, right? Four. Four months then, right? Yes. You don't have a bent finger here in Exhibit 453, do you? My finger is bent there. You're saying that your finger is bent there? Yes. Just Hold the up same. your finger again. Sideways so we could also see it. When my fingers are straightened, this one stays And that's what it looks like, your finger. And you're saying that's what happened on January 22nd, 2008, right? Yes. Ma'am, one of the other things involving this particular finger, it seems to have had its run if you will, of bad things happen to it, right? This finger? Yes, the left ring finger. I don't know. Well, you talked to Ryan Burns about it, didn't you? Yes. And you told him that that finger, the left ring finger, had been damaged, right? Injured, didn't you? I don't know if it was the left. You don't remember telling him it was the left ring finger? No. 
Do you, again, do you have a problem with memory? Occasionally. And so some of the things that you've told us, for example, then, about other things in the past, you may have also had problems with your memory then, right? Yes. And so whatever you told us in the past is somewhat suspect then because your memory may be lacking. You're actually an argument that now this is something he described doing in his book. He's jumping around. He's not giving her a line linear narrative to keep going back to. He's jumping around in time to confuse her. So expect more of that. But I just love what he is doing here. He is slowly unpacking all of her lies. He's ripping each veneer off like peeling an onion, peeling each layer off. He's doing it very carefully, very methodically, and he's exposing exactly who she is to that jury. Yeah, that's right. I think it's good uh, strategy what Martinez is doing. Confusing her and also trying to get her to answer these questions. But the way he's doing it is being aggressive, but he's not being over aggressive. And he's not given a time to try and think of what to actually answer. So that's good on his part. He may not have quite crossed the line yet, but as I said, he's, he's kind of gone up to it and maybe towed it. Yeah, I think he has done that. And I think he's kind of, if not reprimanded, but kind of quietly scolded about, you know, his aggression later on in the trial. But you can hardly blame him, can you? Well, I mean, look um, at her attitude. She is, she has to be the most, inf one, or if not one of the most infuriating witnesses that ever parked their arse on a witness stand. I only told things I remember clearly that are crystallized in my mind. With regard to Mr. Burns, you do remember who he was, right? Yes. And you do remember that you went over to West Jordan to meet him, right? Yes. And you do remember that you did meet him that Thursday, and it was sometime around 11 o'clock in the morning, right? I think so, yes. And when you met him, you guys decided to go somewhere to a restaurant for some sort of business meeting, right? Yes. And during that time, didn't you have a bandage on your finger? Yes. And it was your left finger, wasn't it? No. It was your right finger then, right? Is that what you're saying? It was your right finger? It was two right fingers. So it was your right finger then, right? Um, Ma'am, are you sure that it was your right finger? It was two. Pardon? Two right fingers. Do you remember then that you had a conversation with Detective Flores about this issue involving the finger? Yes. And do you remember that that was on July 16th of 2008? Yes. And did you remember that you told him that on June 4th, you had been over at Mr. Alexander's home, right? Yes. And you told him that you were over at Mr. Alexander's home and that some guy and some girl had come in, right? Yes. And during whatever happened on June 4th, you told Detective Flores that it was your left finger that had been damaged. Do you remember that? Yes. So you did tell that to the detective that it happened on June 4th, right? Yes. Completely irrelevant, pointless, and meaningless observations number 624. Have you noticed that whenever um, Martinez is making a point and trying to drive a point across or a question, he does a little dance? Yeah, but that just might be strategy on his part. It might be, yeah, but like when he's getting animated, he, it's like he's got a polka going on inside his head and he's hopping around. It just, just kind of makes, it strikes me as funny. Does, then, that, does that then refresh your recollection and we'll play it so that we know what we're talking about? Did you get hurt, Mom? You said you were fighting with her. Yeah. What happened to you? Um, she got me. Where at? Let me see. Where are you? Okay, I actually can't me? see it. If you look at him, my finger isn't the same though. I was. Let me see. Which, where, is, where did it get cut? It was it, conveniently, it was right on the crease. Right there on the crease? Can you see? Well, it's kind of a purpler color, I this guess. This one here. Right there. Yeah, right on the crease. Well, there's a vein on this one, maybe. I don't know. It's this one here? 
Yeah. Just a small one? Um, or was it pretty deep? I don't know how deep it was, but my finger hurt for a while. For a while. Okay, so like right in that crease that you, right, and across both of them? Uh, not my middle finger. I mean, it cut this one a little, but not as much. This is where it really went. I don't know how it happened that all these other fingers were missed, but this one, maybe that, I don't know. This one, like I still can't close this finger all the way. It's as close as it goes, whereas this one goes like that. Mm -hmm. Also, my CTR ring used to fit both fingers, and I can't get it on this finger anymore. So that cut pretty deep then? I guess if you feel it, squeeze it. It just feels like bone, like there's nothing abnormal there. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if we said this in the original video, but if she can't fit a ring on that finger anymore because it's so swollen, it's probably a good advantage for her because it has other uses, doesn't it? Oh yeah, a good old, you know, one, two. But again, like my CTR ring slides right on this finger and it used to slide right in off this finger and I just can't fit a ring on here. Okay. It's a bigger size now. What about this hair? What's that from? That's my cat. I'm pretty sure she scratches me a lot. That tape, or that videotape, right? Yes. And that's you having the conversation discussing the left ring finger, right? Yes. And you demonstrated to Detective Flores that left ring finger, right? Yes. And you told him that this woman, during this attack on June 4th of 2008, cut you right there, didn't you? Yes. But we're guessing not before she offered her a cookie and asked her to sing a song about counting to ten. And you showed him, and the finger, if we look at it there, had the same aspect or had the same angle to it that your finger does now, doesn't it? Yes. Ma'am, the injury to your finger happened on June 4th, 2008, not January 22nd of 2008, did it? That's not correct. Do you know what I can't understand? Why she's denying that this injury took place on June the 4th. Why doesn't she just say, I may have done it on June the 4th, I can't remember, you know, I can't remember stabbing him. If I did it while I was stabbing him, I can't remember. She's got nothing to lose by saying that. Well, no, I mean, her life's basically already over, so why not just come clean? Yeah, no bugger believes her anyway. So she's, as I said, she's got nothing to lose by saying, probably, but I don't remember it happening. Well, yeah, but... Because it's completely plausible she would injure her hand while stabbing him 27 times. Well, yeah, of course she would. It's completely possible, so why she doesn't just own up to it and say, okay, it could, you know, it happened then, most probably? She's not gonna own up to it because it's incriminating. Yeah, and because she's just been an awkward arsehole, yeah. that's all it is. Ma'am, with regard to the story involving this particular uh, issue... You told us that it happened on January 22nd of 2008, right? Which issue? The left ring finger. Yes. You then discussed it, or it, there was a, this issue with Ryan Burns, right? Which issue? The cut finger. The cut finger, yes. And then... Two cut fingers. I'll get you, bitch! On July 16th of 2008, you discussed it with Detective Flores, right? Yes. One of the things that you told Mr. Burns was that you cut it at Margaritaville while you were working there, right? No, I did not say that. You never Margarita. told him that then, right? I said at work. So, so you never told him Margaritaville then, right? No, he said that. Right, but you never told him that you cut it at Margaritaville, right? No. You told him that you cut it at work then, right? Yes. And then when you spoke to Detective Flores, you gave him a different story. You didn't say that it was cut at work. You told him that it was cut some other way, right? Yes. And then you testified about it in this court, right? Yes. And you gave us another story of how this happened, right? No. Well, do you remember that you testified that you were at Mr. Alexander's home on June 4th of 2008 at the sink? Do you remember telling us that? Yes. And do you remember telling us that, that you dropped the glass in Mr. Alexander's house? June 4th. Whatever date you were there at Mr. Alexander's house. I broke more than one glass at his house. 
Ma'am, do you remember testifying yesterday about how you suffered this injury to your finger? Yes or no? Not this finger. You know, Ist, she's being really argumentative at the moment. Yeah, she's being pedantically argumentative and she's doing it to wind him up and try and make him lose his cool. She's not answering any questions. She's going off on one. She's being deliberately evasive and she is baiting him. Oh my God, this is going to be carnage, isn't it? Oh yeah, come on. No? Do you remember testifying that involving your finger, your left ring finger yesterday, as a matter of fact, that that was cut when you dropped the glass when you were at Mr. Alexander's house on the day that you killed him? I did not indicate my left finger. I said oh, so you were saying it was your right finger that you cut in Mr. Alexander's house then, right? It was my right finger, yes. So, throughout this whole thing, Mr. Burns, when he indicated what finger it was, he was mistaken. Well, not he was mistaken. You're saying you never told Mr. Burns that it was the right finger that you cut, right? We didn't discuss which hand. Okay, so you, you're, you never indicated to him in any way, shape, or form that it was the right finger. Distinct. Ma'am, this issue of the 22nd of uh, January, 22nd, when you injured, uh, when you say that you were injured. <laughs> um, you kept the journal, didn't you? you? You kept the journal, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you didn't write in it all the time, but you wrote in it some of the time, right? Frequently, yes. Frequently. And you were writing about what was going on in your life back in January of uh, 2008, right? Yes. <laughs> And you were right about things that were significant. Some things. Right. And in fact, with regard to um, this particular journal, you knew that you could almost write anything that you wanted in it because it was going to stay private, right? No. Well, ma'am, let me show you. Or let me mark one of them as exhibits. Do you recognize it? Yes, I do. And that's your journal, right? Sure is. Okay, that's that. Take a look at the entry, and just read it to yourself, on Sunday, August 26th of 07. The whole entry? Just read the first five lines. Six lines. Yes. You wrote that, right? Yes. Take a look at exhibit number 455. Is this a true and accurate copy of those five or six lines? Yes. And you wrote that back on August 26th of 07, right? Yes. Look at the admission of exhibit number 455 is admitted. Take a look at I'm reading it. Just this one entry? Yes, just that one entry, upon August 26th of 07. Okay. I know you have two entries, but the first entry is the one we're talking about. Yeah, it looks like I have three on that day. So have you read the first entry that involves this particular snippet? Yes. This journal and your journals were meant to be private, right? Yes. And that's what it says there. Well, I guess it's a good thing that nobody else reads this because I write right now that I love Travis Victor Alexander so completely that I don't know any other way to be, correct? That's what it says. Yes. Do you remember when we started talking this morning that we talked about uh, an incident where you went over to his house? Yes. And this was the incident that you referenced uh, involving the killing, right? That it went through your head, right? Um, you're talking about the incident in August 2007? Right, exactly. Yes. And that incident in August of 2007, where you went over and peeped inside of his house, happened before this entry here of Sunday, August 26th of 07. Yes, right? What was the last thing you said? He said, by saying peep. Restate your question. When you looked inside the house. Yes, it did happen before this entry. Right, and so really the reason why you confronted Mr. Alexander 
was not because he owed you an explanation or anything like that. The reason you confronted him back in August of 2007 was because you were in love with him and you didn't want to let him go, uh, right? Got to disagree with Nermi's objection there. I think that that was a perfectly reasonable question and I think he, he wasn't very aggressive when he asked it. No, he wasn't. It was a perfectly valid qu question and Judge Stevenson was right to overrule. I mean, he's not mentioned the big O word yet. He's not mentioned obsession, but he's mentioned love and he's shown legally evidence that she loves him. Exactly. And that gives her motive to go and peek inside his windows and not the right. That's not right. But I was in love with him. Yes. You did write this, though, didn't you? Yes. Now, you, you kept more than one journal. You kept a number of journals, right? Um, I kept one journal at a time. Okay. Let's uh, take a look at the, another journal. You recognize it, right? Yes. Why don't you open it up and look through it? Two That's your writing in throughout that whole journal, right? Yes. Okay. There is an entry for Thursday, January twenty fourth, two thousand and eight, right? Yes. Well, let's just take a look at it. See that? Yes. Let me mark another exhibit for you. Take a look at exhibit 456. The, whole, the exhibit that you have in front of you, that's the whole entry for uh, January 24th of uh, 2008, correct? Well, I believe it is for this single one, yes. There are other entries, but that's the complete entry for that one. Correct? Yes. Because it's written in blue ink, right? Yes. And the other ones are, are written in black, right? Um, yes, the one following. Okay. We move to the admission of exhibit number 456. Now, we can take a look at uh, this exhibit number 242002. We talked about the entry of January 24th of 2008. Take a look this journal. And isn't it true that the previous, in terms of chronological time, that the previous entry is on January 20th of 2008? Yes. So there's a gap of four days between the time you wrote on January 20th and on January 24th of 2008, right? Yes. Nothing in between, correct? Not in the journal. I'm, not, I'm asking about the journal, ma'am. That's is correct. Is there anything else in front of you? Ask and answer, Your Honor, and argument it. Sustained. In the journal, ma'am, there are no other entries between January 20th, 20th of 2008 and January 24th of 2008, right? Yes. If we then take a look at Exhibit 456, let's see what you wrote on Thursday, January 24th of 2008. You wrote, I haven't written because there has been nothing noteworthy to report, correct? Yes. Whoa, whoa. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. Didn't you tell us, involving the finger, that this injury to your left finger when Mr. Alexander went to kick you, that that happened on January 22nd of 2008? Yes, it did. And yet you write here that nothing noteworthy has happened, right? Yes. And then you also write that you turned down four offers for a date on Friday night, right? Yes. You were free to date and so was he, right? Yes. And then you finish it out by talking about going up to the snow, right? See that? Yes. You're going to go up there skiing, you crossed it out and you just are going to go up to the snow, right? Yes. Did you go skiing? No, I don't ski. Pardon? I don't ski. No, I didn't go. 
right? The entry of January 20th of 2008, take a look at exhibit number 242.002. Count the pages, please. The pages between the two? No, just your entry of Sunday, January 20th of 2008. Do you want me to show you where it is? I have it. Um, it's four and a few lines. And it starts on the lower left-hand corner with three lines if you count the date, indicating January, 20, January 20th of 2008, right? Yes, and I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's five pages and a few lines. And in it, one of the things that you talk about is this issue involving Lonnie's baptism, right? I haven't read it. Can I read it? Sure, go ahead. I moved away from Lonnie, so if you want me to finish it, if you're going to ask me about the rest of the entry, I can read it. I'm rest. asking you about reading the whole entry of Sunday, June okay. 20th, 2008. Go okay. ahead and finish it. Do you speak English? Parla usted English? Yes. It does talk about Lonnie's baptism, right? Yes. And previously, when you testified, you indicated that the reason you missed Lonnie's baptism is because you and Mr. Alexander were involved in a sexual liaison, right? Yes. And, you, and this was a sexual liaison where the pop rocks and the Tootsie Pops were involved, right? That's I'd what you to, said, right? I'd have to reference dates. Well, why don't I show you a copy of the transcript then and see if that refreshes your recollection as to what you told us on February 12th. I would appreciate that. All right, I will. Starting on page 5. Bottom, wow, read that. There's been lots of talk about him, you know, talking to her very aggressively. There is a marked contrast between, you know, the way most people cross-examine witnesses and the way he does it. He is rather confrontational and aggressive. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, certainly not with her. But there is a marked difference between him and other prosecutors I've seen. Yeah, I've seen quite a few prosecutors, but... I do like Martinez. Yeah, I like his style, especially towards her and also towards Alice the Toilet. She's going to be coming up later. Um, I think he, for that. I think he, you know, he, if it was physical what he did to her, she'd be down for the count for good. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it is interesting to see his conduct and, you know, how it is perceived not just by her but by, you know, fellow counsel and the judge. They've just seen how much rope they can give him, really, aren't they? Yeah. They're giving him quite a bit of length. That's what she said! <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. Would you like me to read it out loud? Just Here's the highlighted that. portion? Nope, just keep reading it. Okay. Starting at the bottom, right? Right. Have you read the entire transcript that deals with the sexual encounter involving the uh, Pop Rocks and the Tootsie Pops? Yes, I started where you highlighted and well, finished it. Read, read it above it. Does it, that have anything to do with the Tootsie Pops or the Rock Pops? Okay. Does the upper portion have anything to do with it? Or yes. No? Why don't you read the previous page just to make sure that we cover everything involving that particular encounter? There's nothing about the Pop Rocks on this page. There is nothing before that, correct? Yes. Yes, yes, I'm going to take the question. She read the entire transcript. I don't believe she has at this point. Read the entire transcript. I think that's the transcript. Irrespective of the date that we're talking about, whether it was January 20th or January 21st or January 22nd, you do reference the Pop Rocks and Top Tootsie Pops sexual incident by reference to Lonnie's baptism, right? The journal yes. entry of January 20th of 2008 also references Lonnie's baptism, doesn't it? Take a look yes. at Exhibit 458. This is 458. Yes. And that's a true and accurate copy in front of you, the excerpt of what's in your journal involving Lonnie's uh, baptism and the sexual encounter, isn't it? Yeah, let me make sure I'm just referring to the same day in my journal. Well, let's take a look at it. Let me have that. Mm -hmm. The 
first entry is identical on the first page that indicates Sunday, January 20th, 2008, correct? Yes, that's when I wrote the entry. Okay. Then, as we continue on, there is the entry involving the baptism, right? Do you see that? Let's start that. That entry is there involving Lonnie's baptism? Yes, I just don't know if I'm referencing the 20th on that part of the entry. Ma'am, is there any other intervening date between the January 20th of 2008 where we started and the very end where you put J-A? Is there any other date in it? Th they did. Yes or no? There might be, I haven't. Well, why don't you take a look? Let's take a look at the first page. First page starts Sunday, January 20th, 2008, doesn't it? When I wrote it, yes. Does it start out saying Sunday, January 20th, 2008, yes or no? Yes. And isn't it true that it starts out in black ink, right? Yes. And then it continues on in blue ink, right? Yes. And it flows, doesn't it? It says the words flow from what's at the bottom there to the next page, don't they? Yes. So then we go to the bottom of it. The next page is also in blue ink, right? Yes. In the next page, there is no other date reference, is there? She needs to review it before she can answer She's the question. She's looking at it. Overruled. Maybe. Thank you. She knows damn well there are no other dates in there. All she's doing at the moment is just wasting court's time. Yeah. It's not like she's on trial for her life, is it? It's like it's theatre. Exactly. The Jody show her. Again. Yeah. yeah. No, no, ma'am. Don't turn the page. I just want you to look at that next page to see if you see a date. Objection, Your Honor. She needs to review it. Oh, that's not the question. Overlooked. And let that be a lesson to you. I didn't write a date. No, there is no date on there, is there? No. Okay, let's turn the page. And that page is also in blue ink, right? Yes. And there is no date on that next page, is there? He, that's correct. Then let's look at the page following that. That page, where you have your left hand on, that's also in blue ink. No, 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 you turn the page, go back. That's also in blue ink, correct? Yes. And there is no date on there either, is there? That's correct. Let's turn the page. Bad dates. And then on the next page, that's also in blue ink, correct? Yes. And there's no date on that either, right? That is correct. The next page after that contains the initials J-A, right? Yes. That's for Jody Arias, correct? Yes. It could also stand for Jumbo Arsehole. And that's also in blue ink, correct? Yes. And there's no date in that one, is there? There is not. And if you turn the page, go ahead. There's an entry for January 24th of 2008, right? Yes. We can then go back, turn the page once. We're looking at the entry that says J-A on it, right? Yes. We go to the previous page, the one that you're pointing to. It does start. I may have it back with a word that's in quotations, right? Yes. Exhibit number 458 includes that particular portion of the entry in quotations, right? Yes. Then if we go to the previous page, at the bottom of the page, It's also in blue ink, right? Yes. The entry that I'm showing you now includes that last paragraph, right? Second to last. Second to last paragraph. Well, if you take a look at the bottom, you see that there's a word that's... Oh, I that's... apologize. You're, you're correct. Okay. So, in essence, what we're talking about is that the one with the word that's crossed out then travels on to the next page and that's what's included in this entry, correct? We, in Exhibit 458, right? Yes. Along with 
the first page that includes the date, right? Yes. And the entry or Exhibit 458 references Lonnie's baptism, right? Yes. Move for the admission of Exhibit 458. All right, you need some additional time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take the noon recess at this time. Please be back in the jury room at 125. Remember the admonition. Have a nice lunch. You are excused. All right. Please. Wow. I mean, were we expecting kind of anything less intense? I'm expecting a lot, lot more fireworks. I know we've not even scratched the surface yet, have we? No, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I mean, the last, what, seven... I think it was seven or eight episodes we've done with just her telling these lies on the stand have been awful, but... Yeah, it was infuriating. Yeah, seeing the way um, Martinez just goes off at her, it's brilliant, pulling these lies apart one by one. But the thing is, he's doing it in such a way that he's not giving her any time to think. Exactly. He's just peppering her with question after question after question. See, Jodie's used to having time to think with Nurma. Yeah. But with Martina, she's got no chance. No, no chance at all. And what we have had over the past seven or eight days of testimony is basically Jodie saying, poor me, I'm the victim. We get, I understand, a substantially different side of her um, from now on. So let's carry on and let's see where this takes us. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Exhibit 458 is admitted. Mr. Martinez, you may continue with cross-examination. Madam, when we left off, we were talking about the issue involving the Tootsie Pops and the Pop Rocks, and um, that that can be referenced involving somebody named Lonnie and their baptism, correct? Yes. And regardless of whether it happened on a Sunday or a Thursday, that's the same incident because you missed Lonnie's baptism. Is right? it? Yes. 458 is the entry for Sunday, January 20th, 2008. Do you see that? Yes. And it starts out, well, I'm at the Institute building, Dobson and Southern, the sister missionaries, correct? Yes. There are some... Don't you think she's got very neat handwriting? Yeah, she has, but it's about the only thing about her that is bloody neat, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. No, there's a problem with your face. Two blank pages, and then a third page that begins and says, So I went to the church building and met with the sisters and gave them a ride to the institute building where I am now, correct? Yes. That's part of the same entry for that January um, 20th, 2008 date, correct? Yes. There are no, in the whole body of that particular entry, there are no other dates uh, mentioned, correct? There's another day reference, but not a date. I'm asking dates, aren't I? Right? It's implied, it is referenced. No, I'm asking dates. Do you see anywhere in those five or six pages another date? Yes. Show me where there is another D-A-T-E date in Exhibit 242.002. Once again, wasting the court's time, picking but, fly shit out of pepper. Of course she is. It's all she does, wastes everyone's time, not just the courts, but the lawyers, the jurors, yeah. the gallery. Yeah. There's no date in there. She will just give some crap about how she implied it was a different day. Yeah, but Martinez will pull that apart. Yeah, and let's hope that the judge issues her some sort of, you know, warning to stop being an absolute arse. I'm counting this as a date for it says Thursday. It says Thursday night, though, doesn't it? Yes. It doesn't say a date, does it? No. And 
we're getting to it when it says Thursday. That's at the lower right hand corner of this exhibit number 458, correct? That's correct. And your testimony involving the pop rocks. Exhibit number 457 does indicate that you thought it was a Thursday, right? Yes. You indicated previously that uh, you were having trouble remembering it. Did this exhibit refresh your recollection? Yes. And so you're indicating I'm sis sitting with next to Sisters Knight, who's totally trying to read this, and Lonnie, who was just confirmed today, right? Yes. And that's the Lonnie that we, we've been talking about, right? Yes. He was baptized Thursday night, which is the date that is referenced in your previous testimony, right? Right. Shame on me. I was. Quote, unquote, wrapped up in other activities that pulled me away from attending the baptism. And the reason that's in quotes is because you're trying to get across something else other than being wrapped up, right? Yes. You're trying to get across that this involved a liaison or a sexual liaison with Travis Alexander, right? Yes. And you said namely work, but then getting prepped to go to Travis's house for the night where we explored every naughty fantasy we could conjure up in our fruitful imaginations that we haven't already fulfilled with one another. I love him, I really do, right? Yes. And the fantasy that you guys, that you're talking about, involved the Tootsie Pops and Pop Rocks, correct? Part of it did, yes. Part of it, well. In a way that I've actually just thought of, Jody is actually better off where she is and childless. Because can you imagine if she was found not guilty of this and she went on and she had children, heaven forbid. Those children would have to deal with the fact that their mother shoved pop rocks up her snatch. And that's not a good thing for any kid to grow up knowing about their mum. Absolutely not. Can you imagine the stick those poor kids would get at school? I can imagine the stick that came out of Jodie's... Never mind. <laughs> Ma'am, this transcript that we talked about only talks about the Tootsie Pops and Pop Rocks, doesn't it? No, it mentions bubble bath. It mentions what? The bubbles. And the bubble bath is part of the Tootsie Pops and Pop Rocks, right? They were separate the same night. Same night. Is that, is that how this reads, then? The transcript, is that how it reads? I don't know if it reads that way, but... Well, then take a look at 459, which is the partial transcript, and see if that's how it reads, that it's different. Different how? I don't know what Well, the way you were trying to tell me that it was different, that it talks about a di different sequence of events. Yes, it references two different sequences. Which do you events. see? Are you talking about the issue involving the, the bathtub? Yes. Isn't that part of the Tootsie Pops and Pop Rocks in, uh, in engagement, if you will? Not in the bathtub. It didn't happen on the same day, ma'am? Same day, yes. Same encounter? Mm, yes, I guess. Well, no, what I'm saying is, did he ejaculate twice that night? Yes. So, are you saying that when you were involved in the, the bathtub, that was hours later than the Tootsie Pops and Pop Rocks? Is that what you're saying? No. It was part of the same encounter, wasn't it? Yes, I guess. When you keep saying, I guess, you were there though, right? Yeah, I was there. And you were enjoying it, weren't you? Yes. And you enjoyed the Tootsie Pops and the Pop Rocks, correct? I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. I enjoyed his attention. No, I want to know if you enjoyed the Tootsie Pops and the Pop Rocks. I'm not asking you about his attention. All right. Quite apart from the fact that she just did something quite miraculous and very very rare and that's wiped her eye have you noticed the way that she is looking when she answers martinez's questions versus the way she looked when she answered nermi's questions look straight at the jury to answer nermi's questions look at her now 
Yeah, she's looking like she's looking directly at the audience. I mean, yeah, as we said in the intro, the quality of the video is crap. But even the crap quality of the video, look at those eyes. Those are just... They don't look right, do they? They're dead. Um, when I was preparing this for kind of to start recording, skip forward a little bit, didn't watch any of it, but just check that the sound and the um, vision, you know, the visuals were okay. And I saw this unhinged look on her face earlier on. So when we, if I see that again, we'll freeze it and I'll point it out. But wow, she is already starting to transform from the poor me into the have you got a problem with me i'm ready to take you on uh, yeah um, she doesn't fear because she's a psychopath yeah and she really thinks that she can take a lawyer on with martinez's experience at his, at his, at his own game <laughs> she's dreaming of course she is deluded i can't say enjoy would be the right word well you so what you're saying is involve when we talk about the Tootsie Pops and the Pop Rocks, you're saying you didn't enjoy it, did not enjoy it, correct? I'm not saying that either. Well, there can't be a middle ground. You either enjoyed it or you didn't, right? That's not correct. Oh, so you can go, you, in your view, you can go through and act and not enjoy it, but also enjoy it. What are you trying to say? Am I allowed to tell you what I'm trying to say? I want to know whether or not you enjoyed it. I wouldn't characterize it that way. So you're saying you did not enjoy it? Just want to be if clear. If you're speaking only in the context of the Tootsie Pops and the, and pop, the rocks, pop Rocks, sure. I wouldn't call it enjoyed. You would not say that you enjoyed it, right? I would not say enjoyed. And if we then take a look, though, at exhibit number 458, which references that encounter involving Lonnie, right? Um, Lonnie, no. You mean it didn't involve the baptism involving Lonnie? I don't understand your question. Well, then let's just take a look at it, okay? We're talking about, irrespective of the date, we've referenced that as Lonnie's baptism. Just for point of reference. You remember we talked about that, right? That's right. During this encounter that we've been calling Lonnie's baptism, there were some Pop Rocks and Tootsie Pops that were involved, right? No, Lonnie's baptism did not involve Tootsie Pops and Pop Rocks. Oh my god. What the hell is she trying to bloody pull here? I don't know why she would pull something like that. I mean, it's obvious what Martinez meant, but she, as we, as we said before, is just being pedantic. She's acting stupid like she doesn't understand, but she knows it damn, damn well what he is talking yeah, about. She's, she's just trying to be a smart ass, and all she's doing really is annoying everybody and that's all she's doing but maybe that's her end, end game yeah vile little bitch ma'am we both know what we're talking about this journal references lonnie's baptism doesn't it yes and you miss lonnie's baptism right yes and the reason you miss lonnie's baptism is because you were having a tootsie pop placed somewhere right yes that's one of the reasons okay and this exhibit here exhibit number 458 does say that you explored every naughty fantasy we could conjure up in our fruitful imaginations that we haven't already fulfilled with one another, right? Yes. You, this doesn't say that you didn't enjoy it, does it? No. It does say you did enjoy it, doesn't it? I don't see the word enjoy in there. No, th did I say the word enjoy was in there? Yes, you I said it say said I enjoyed it. I say the word was enjoyed enjoy there? It says you explored every naughty fantasy we could conjure up in our fruitful imaginations. You're saying that having a fruitful imagination, that's not enjoyment, is what you're saying, right? I'm not saying that. And you're saying that every naughty fantasy, that's a bad thing, right? That's what you're saying. I'm not saying that. Well, the Pop Rocks were part of this naughty fantasy, weren't they? Part of it, yes. And they were part of fulfilling, fulfilling your imaginations, right? His imagination, yes. Oh, so it wasn't, so even though you wrote it, he didn't write this, did he? I wrote it. That's right, and those are your words, right? Yes. And so even though you say, haven't already fulfilled with one another these fruitful uh, imaginations and all of that stuff, well, that doesn't really mean what it says. Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that. Well, 
it doesn't distinguish between pop rocks and it doesn't distinguish between top Tootsie Pops, does it? No, it doesn't. And yet you're saying here that they are different, right? Um, no, that's not what I'm saying. It's go what you're saying goes against what's written there, does it? Doesn't no, it, it does not go against it. How many times is she going to go around this bloody circle with uh, No, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. What the hell does she mean? Look, she's she, at the moment she's smug and she thinks she is on top. She is going to get pecked away by this guy slowly. And he will break her down until she starts crying. Now, we've seen her crying. Just keep that in mind, right? At the moment, she thinks she's on top. She isn't. She's not doing herself any favours with that jury, answering these questions the way she is at the moment. She's not even giving a yes or no. No. She's been deliberately ambiguous and evasive. Don't think that the jury haven't noted that. Don't think that the jury aren't thinking that right now, because they are. Because we are. And because every single other person who has never seen this part of the trial, they're also thinking that as well. She is a... Oh, God, there are no words to describe her. I know. I know. And I know I got angry a little bit later, but sometimes logic prevails. I know how you feel, because I feel it as well, but sit tight because the good times are coming, trust me. I hope it's soon. It will be. Where? Show me here. Point it out where it says, I did not enjoy the Tootsie Pop encounter. Does it say I that? I didn't anywhere? write anything like that in my journal. It doesn't say anything there like that, does it? That's correct. And it doesn't say anything there that you did not enjoy the uh, Pop Rocks encounter, does it? That's right. And nothing prevented you from writing that in there, right? That's right. And you could have written anything that you wanted. It's not like you didn't have pens, right? Yeah, that's right. And you had enough space to write it because we know there was an entry after that, right? Yes. And it's a situation where it, you considered this to be a secret kind of thing so that if you wrote whatever you wanted there, you had a reasonable expectation that it would remain private, right? Reasonable. Which means you had an expectation that it would remain private, right? More hope. Well, you were living with another individual, I think you said Rachel, correct? Not at this date. Okay, who were you living, where were you living? I was living at 9634 East Nito Avenue in East Mesa. Is that an apartment or is that, or were you renting a room? I was renting a room. And in that room that you rented, you kept this journal, right? Yes. So. No one really had any authority to go into your room, right? That's not right. Well, are you saying that people in that house went through your journal? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that. So you did have an expectation that your journal would remain private there, right? While it was at home, yes. So you're saying that somebody broke in and looked at your journal? Is that what you're saying? No, because that would be at home. Well, you, you kept your journal at home, didn't you? I took it everywhere with me. And so what you're saying is if you went somewhere, it could have fallen into the wrong hands. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. You never reported to the police that your journal ever went. Anybody ever looked at your journal, correct? I don't think that's a crime, so no, I didn't. Well, ma'am, did I ask you if it was a crime? No, you didn't. Are you a lawyer? Do you know what a crime is and what isn't? Um, I have a pretty good idea, but I'm not an attorney. Don't ever forget it. And so, if somebody broke into your house and read your journal, you're saying, ah, you wouldn't report it because you wouldn't think that was a crime, right? That's right. Not the breaking and entering part, just the reading the journal part. <clears throat> oh, so, so now you're, you're drawing a d distinction, but isn't this where this journal was kept most of the time? With you in your home? No, I just understood what you said. World. Um, my understanding was that you were talking about if somebody was looking in my journal, if that was, if I would have reported that. No, I would not have reported somebody reading my journal to the police. Part of this encounter that you had in, in involving the Tootsie Pops also involved braids, correct? Yes. And, um, you, 
you have a definite opinion on the braids, don't you? Um, yes, I have an opinion. And you think they're hot, don't you? Um, I guess. Well, no, you're the person that knows. We don't want you to guess. You think that the braids are hot, don't you? I think cute is more appropriate. Ma'am. Let's take a listen then. I'll have this marked as an exhibit. It's part of the conversation that you had with Mr. Alexander back on May 10th of 2008. I'll mark it. I'll have you listen to it to see whether or not that is your voice and whether or not we're talking about the braids. You know what I really liked is when we were in the bath with the candles and I had the braids. Okay. Bubbles. That's on top of oh, I love the braids. I know they're hot. Bloody hell, that just nearly hit me in the eye then. <laughs> another one exposed. Yes, Martinez's beat just chips away another lie, and it nearly blinded me. That was your voice, right? Yes. And you're talking about braids, right? Yes. And you're talking about how much you like them, right? Yes. And you're also saying that they're hot, right? Yes. And this encounter involving the Pop Rocks and Tootsie Pops also involved braids, right? Yes. So you enjoy those braids, right? I don't... It's not a yes or no answer. Well, we did hear you saying that you enjoyed them, right? Do you want to hear it again? No. You did hear that, right? I said I like them. When you say that you like them, isn't it true that that means that if there's something that's enjoyable? Yes. Right, and you also said that they were hot, right? Yes. So, during your sexual encounters with Mr. Alexander, if you wore braids, you thought they were hot and you liked them, right? I liked his attention. Yes, both hot and liked him. Restate the question. When you were with Mr. Alexander, isn't it true? You wore braids, you liked it. Like them. Yes. And with regard to the braids, isn't it true that when you, you were with Mr. Alexander, you thought the braids were hot? Okay. Oh no, I'm not asking for an okay. I'm asking for you to tell me the truth. What is it that you believe? I believe that he thought it was hot, so it was hot. So what you're saying here with regard to exhibit number 460 and that telephone call that was played during your direct examination, you're saying you lied? No. Well, let's, you want to listen here when you say that they're hot? I just heard it. Right. And so it doesn't say anything about you doing this for Mr. Alexander anywhere, does it? No, that's implied. It's implied, let's listen to it. You know what I really liked when we were in the bath with the candles and I had the braids? And they were bubbles, and I was on top of it. Oh, I love the braids. I know, those are hot. Those are, that's your voice, right? Yes, and Travis's. Did I ask you if that was Travis's voice, ma'am? I didn't know which voice you were talking about. Did I ask you if that was Travis's voice? No. We're talking about your voice. That was your voice, right? Yes. And you do say that those braids are hot, right? Yes. And you said it because you believed it, right? Yes. These well, that only took about 15 minutes, didn't it, for her to actually admit that braids were hot and that she enjoyed the Tootsie Pops and Pop, rock, pop Rocks. I can't even bloody say it. She was going around and around just to waste time before she wanted to give an answer. Yeah. Do you know what? Sometimes I really wish that you know, Judge Stevens would step in and say, look, when he asks you the question, answer the question. Yes or no. Stop all this crap, you know. I mean, obviously she wouldn't say stop all this crap. But, well, no, she won't. You know, I just wish that she would kind of bring in some order because at the moment she is letting Jodie run wild and, you know, I think it's going to have to be Martinez that appeals to her at some point to mm -hmm. uh, direct Jodie to actually cooperate. I think uh, what Jodie's doing is uh, playing a part here. 
yeah, she's definitely playing a part. She's trying to run it. Yeah, she is trying to control it, but the more Martinez questions her and jumps her around from time to time and place to place, the less control she has. And that's exactly what he wants. And that's what he achieves. Yeah. Yeah, according to what he says in the book anyway. Uh, two entries that we have here, these journal entries. Exhibit number 456. You start them out by dating them at the upper left-hand corner of each of that one, which is exhibit 456, and 458. You also date it on the upper left-hand corner, or the left-hand corner. Do you see that? Yes. And you've already told us that there are no dates in between the Sunday 12008 and Thursday 12408, correct? Correct. And you looked at the journal, right? Yes. There are no entries between those two dates, right? That's right. And it's fair to say that September 22nd of 2008 falls between this gap here, correct? Correct. And nowhere do you mention either in this January 24th of 08 or January 20th of 08 document, you don't mention anything about this physical encounter with Mr. Alexander that you told us happened on January 22nd of, of 2008, do you? No, I would have never. I'm not asking if you would ever. Do you mention it there? I said no. And with regard to not mentioning it there, nothing stopped you from mentioning it, right? Yes, something did stop me. So you're saying that somebody held your hand and, and stopped you from writing that? I'm not saying that. Are you saying that uh, somebody came into your house and stole your journals and, and, and said, you know, and took the took whatever was the journal there so that you took the journal so you couldn't write in it? I'm not saying that. You had the ability to write in it, right? Yes. You had the free will to write in it, didn't you? Yes. And there is nothing there, correct? Referencing that incident? Pardon? Are you, do you mean referencing that incident? I can't hear what you're saying. Do you mean referencing that incident? There's nothing there regarding right, that? Right, there's nothing referencing that incident between those two dates, is there? There is not. That, the reason it's not there is because it didn't happen, right? That's not right. It's false. No way. Not this time. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It never happened. You could have written, you do say, in exhibit number 456, I haven't written because there has been nothing noteworthy to report, right? That's right. So to you, getting this injury to the left ring finger, that's no big deal then, right? That's that what not what saying? it says. Pardon? That's not what it says. I'm not asking you what it says, I'm asking you what you think. It's no big deal to you then, right? Right? That's not right. Well, you came in, you told us about it, right? But it's not written in your journal, right? No. You didn't call the police, right? No. You didn't get any medical care for it, right? Not professional medical care. Ma'am, did you go to a doctor to get it looked at? No. Did you go to a hospital to get it looked at? No. Did you go to a friend's house or an acquaintance to tell them about it? Definitely not. And with regard to the conversation that you had with Detective Flores back on uh, July 16th of 2008, you didn't tell him anything about that, did you? No, definitely not. In fact, you gave him a different story, didn't you? Yes. You told him something about these two people and how you got that injury to that finger, right? Yes. So you're saying that what you told the detective there was a lie? Yes. So you, in, in, in your view, do you dis what dis when do you decide to tell the truth? When you're in this court and no place else? Is that what, what I'm hearing from you? No. I mean, just because you're in this court doesn't mean you have to tell the truth. You're in, I mean, that's what you're telling us, right? That's not what I'm telling anyone. Ma'am, nothing has stopped you from telling this story ever, correct? That's not correct. You have free will, don't you? Yes, I do. Nothing the detective did stopped you from telling him, right? Flores, no. Nothing that, nothing stopped, you had a car back then, didn't you? When? When this supposedly happened, January 22nd of 08. Yes. You could have driven yourself to a hospital, right? Yes. 
You could have, do you remember telling us about an incident that occurred in August of 2007 where you caught Mr. Alexander kissing some other girl, right? Yes. And you told us that, well, with regard to that incident, I called my father, right? Yes. And you told him some things about what it, you had seen and what had happened the day before, right? Yes. Nothing would have stopped you from calling your father to tell him that, right? Well, sorry, I'm kind of hyper-literal sometimes. Yes or no? Nothing did that day. Yes or no? Would anything have stopped you from calling your father? Um, maybe, but... She's not going to give it up voluntarily, is she? Absolutely not, just like she hasn't with the others. She's taking Martinez around the houses, purposely evading answering his question. Please, please, Judge Stevens, step in, because this is getting... I mean, we're not even an hour, really, into the testimony, are we? No, and she hasn't given one straight answer not yet. Not one single straight answer, no. Well, ma'am, you didn't have any problem calling him in August of uh, 2007 and complaining, did you? I did have a problem with it. He had to convince me to tell well, him. Well, you called him and you told him, right? Eventually, yes, I did. You called him and you told him, right? Yes. You could have called him and said, hey, I got this problem with my finger. You had a telephone, right? I didn't have a problem with my finger then. Well, I thought that you told us when you testified that on January 22nd of 2008 was when you had this finger injured by Mr. Alexander. Do you remember telling us that? Yes, January, yes. And so on January 22nd of 2008, or any time thereafter, you had a telephone, right? Yes. You could have called your father and could have told him, right? Could have, yes. But you didn't. I right? wouldn't have, no, I did not. And no one knew about this injury or this this supposed or claimed injury to the um, little finger until after you killed Mr. Alexander, right? That's right. Well, if all this did happen, then where is the proof that he caused it? Absolutely none. And she's just admitted then that nobody knew and there was no proof whatsoever of this happening until after Travis's death. Exactly. Or after she murdered him. She so, didn't even mention it to Flores. No, she didn't. So, you know, we all know where, where it happened. We all know what happened with it. So why she can't just admit it, just admit the obvious and let us move on, I don't know. She but, likes to inflict the pain. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a part of this she's doing to punish Travis's family, as if she didn't punish him enough. Exactly. She's got to punish them as well. She is so despicable. Yeah. That was a significant day, January 22nd of 2008, correct? Yes. It was significant for a number of reasons, including the fact that you claim that on January 21 of 2008, you caught Mr. Alexander masturbating uh, to some images of boys, correct? I only saw one image. It was a boy. Ma'am, didn't you say that there were images, there were more than one there were more than one image. I only caught a so clip of one, one image. So was there more than one image? I'm sorry. Was there more than one image, ma'am? Yes. Okay, but you only saw one, right? One clip. According to yes. you. Mm -hmm. Is that yes? That's yes. And that was the day before this supposed thing happened on January, or where he had this violent issue with you on January 22nd of 2008, right? That's right. And if we go again to this entry here at 456, I haven't written because there has, there has been nothing noteworthy to report. Okay, so to every woman that is listening to this, including you, sweetheart, okay, if you were to walk in and ca catch the person you love masturbating to a picture of a minor, and then, you know, obviously you would be in shock and in total you know numbness for 24 hours if not angry and chucked him out straight away or killed him or whatever right but let's say you decide to stay with that person and the next day he bangs seven bells of absolute shite out of you 
what's the first thing you're going to do? Oh no, your needs come before mine, or you're an absolute psycho, you're new pervert, I'm going to go to the coppers on you, you're going away for a long time, mate. Which one would you do? I'd be out there straight away as soon as I saw what he was masturbating to. E exactly, but for, for the sake of argument, if you stayed for an extra 24 hours, right, I know you wouldn't, and I know that most of the women listening to this wouldn't. They'd be either out or they'd report him straight away. Would you put his needs before your own, or would you tell him what a psycho and a pervert he was and that you're going straight to the cops and you're going to get him nicked? What would you do, realistically? I'd call him a psycho, and then I'd go and report him. Yeah. Before kicking him in, not before kicking him in the bollocks, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the first thing I'd do. Or we'll chop it off. Yeah. So, she is living in her own marshmallow garden world at the moment. She is not thinking as we would think. She is thinking in her own little bubble. And, you know, this is going to be her undoing because her reasoning is not based in reality, is it? No, it's not. Not one bit. That's what you wrote, correct? Correct. The way you explain it to us here, this issue involving Mr. Al this claimed issue involving Mr. Alexander, that's pretty noteworthy, isn't it? Not for my journal, but is it noteworthy? Yes, in reality, I guess it is very noteworthy. It's noteworthy to you, isn't it? It is today. It's noteworthy to you, isn't it? I already answered your question. And the answer is yes or no? Yes. And it's so noteworthy to you that you waited until after you killed Mr. Alexander to tell anybody about it, right? I waited years. The answer is, did you wait until after this prosecution started, after you were charged, to tell anybody about it, correct? I asked an answer. Oh, right. Yes, I waited years. And ma'am, one of the things that the way you made it sound was that he had a problem, right? He did have a problem. That's what you claim, right? That's the reality. That's what you claim, correct? Okay, yes. When back then there was this problem, did you call, for example, child, the way you made it sound is he had this huge problem. Did you call, for example, Child Protective Service? No. I mean, you made it sound that there was such a big problem that he even went and spent the night somewhere at a friend's house and they had a child, and that concerned you. Do you remember telling us that on direct examination? Yes. And yet, you didn't go to that person and tell him, hey, he's got this issue, did you? No. You didn't go to the police department and tell him anything, right? No. For those of you who watched our Chris Watts series, um, there was a time during the interrogation bit when... Um, Graham Coder and Tammy Lee were questioning Chris Watts that we kind of felt a little bit of vindication because they were asking the questions that we had been asking throughout the whole process, weren't they? Yeah, they were hitting them right on the nail, what we had been thinking and asking. Yeah, um, and we're kind of getting the same vibe here, aren't we? But it's not just us, it's the questions and, and the stuff that you guys have been throwing out as well. So a lot of this jigsaw puzzle for us is... is kind of coming together slowly but it is coming slower yeah each video is a, you know an evolving process for us isn't it so learn something new yeah so yeah it's just good to hear kind of the questions we've been asking and the logical conundrums that we've been posing to her actually being posed to her you know yeah isn't it it's brilliant yeah you chose to keep that allegation until about uh, two years ago is that right? Um, I think it's almost three years ago at this point. No. I think it was almost three and a half, four years ago at this point. Pick a year. What year did you disclose? 2009 was when I first and told somebody. And you were arrested back in July of 2008, right? Yes. And when this detective interviewed you, you didn't tell him anything about it, did you? Definitely not. And you could have, though, right? In theory, yes, I could have. Ma'am, one of the things that happened with regard to this particular issue is that there was a hearing that was scheduled uh, involving this. Uh, well, this. Was, what time did this 
allegation happened? When do you claim that, we know the date, what time do you claim that you saw this masturbatory activity? It would have been in the afternoon after my morning shift. And sun. what time would that have been then? I don't know the exact time, but it was afternoon before, well before it was dark, it was still light out. Okay, can you be more specific? Was it noon? It was after noon. All right, was it two o'clock? Objection, ask and answer, Sherry says she knows what time it was. Restate the question. If it was so noteworthy, why can't you remember the time? It was kind of traumatic. So, you would remember something if it was traumatizing. Yeah, but when you think about it, just plain devil's advocate, when something traumatic happens or you are being traumatized or being subjected to trauma, you'd always look at your watch. True. What? It's, if, just because it's, weren't your senses heightened, heightened at that time that you saw this? Didn't you get angry or upset? Objection. Were you angry? I was sick to my stomach. Ma'am, were you I was angry? Not angry? Were you angry? I became angry later, but not in that moment. Were you angry at that time, ma'am? I said not in that moment. So the answer is no, right? Yes. Were you upset at that time? Yes. So if you're upset, aren't you kind of your senses heightened at that time to know the time? Can you repeat that? Weren't your senses heightened because of this anger to at least know the time so somebody could check it out? Well, you said because of anger, but I wasn't angry at that moment. Well, then, you see this, you're not angry and you're not upset, right? I am upset. Oh, you are upset. If you're upset, don't you think that that would have heightened your senses over what you just saw? My mind doesn't work like that. So the answer is no, then, right? Judge Stevens is uh, overruling a lot of Nermi's objections at the moment. I think that she wants to see where this is going. I think that she kind of sees the same jugular that Martinez sees, and she wants to see if Martinez is going to rip it or not. Yeah, but also... Sometimes when Nermi does object, Judge Stevens says to, you know, rephrase the question or restate your question, but she yeah. is overruling them. But I'm telling you right now, the way she is acting, Jodie, it's not going to win her any prizes with the jury. No, no, it isn't. But at least they're starting to see who she really is now. At least they're starting to see. Do you remember when we speculated on the first trip she took with Travis? I think they're getting a, a, a better glimpse now of what he saw on that first trip. Yeah, I agree. It kind of moved in slow motion, so if that's heightened... Is it yes or no, ma'am? Um, it's kind of a matter of opinion. I don't know. And I'm asking for your opinion. Yeah, ask an answer. She can't speculate. Overruled. Whether it's heightened, my perception of things, is that your question? Right. At that time when you're viewing this, the way you describe this, bad act. Well, it's... I'm not sure. I mean, it's something that's I'm never going to forget, but I wish I could. You're never going to forget it, is what you just said, right? That's right. But you have forgotten the time. I know it was the afternoon. Ma'am, I'm asking you for the time. Objection, Ms. Kirkgrove, there's a She said she doesn't know the time. Restate your question, sustained. You said that you'll never forget it, right? The incident. Right. And I'm asking you, isn't it true that you forgot the time? Objection again, Ms. Kirkgrove, there's a She said she never knew the time. Sustained, rephrase. You said that you had just been that are out from uh, Mimi's Cafe, right? For a little while. Pardon? For a little while. I was off work for a little while. You worked at Mimi's Cafe, right? Yes. You had been working that day, right? Yes. Your shift was over, right? Yes. What time did your shift start? 
It varied. That day, what day, what time did your shift start? In the morning. What time? Sometime in the morning. I don't know the exact time. You don't know the exact time, yet you knew that you had to be there on that day at a certain yes. time? Those of you that have ever worked in the service industry, is this common? Um, do, you know, restaurants have set hours for their staff to work or do they change from week to week or do they have set shifts? Because the way she is talking, she started, you know, at random times, which I'm sure is not tolerable for any employer, let alone a restaurant. Well, I've worked as a barista. Yeah. And... I can tell you now that our rotor was put up and we usually worked the same shifts. Yeah, and you were there for 10 years and those shifts really never deviated, did they? No, they didn't. There was the set ones and that's what we did. So as we have said dozens and dozens of times during this series, once more, she is full of shit. And you know exactly what time you're working. Yeah. What time does Mimi's open? I've never opened Mimi, so I'm not sure, but they open early. So you don't know the time that it opens, you don't know the time that you went to work, right? Not the exact time. Just the morning is what you can give us, right? Yes, early morning. So if you went at 10 o'clock, 10 to 12 would only be two hours, right? That's right. Were you, was, your, was it an eight hour shift then? No, they aren't eight hour shifts. So on that day, it was not an eight hour shift, right? That's right. How many hours was your shift? It depended on the flow of business. I understand that it may depend on that. How many hours did you work on January 21 of 2008 on this day that this horrible thing you claim happened? I would only be able to tell you a range. How many hours then? Give me a range. Since you, what you're telling me is you don't know. I know the range, but not the exact hours. So you're telling me you don't know the exact hours, Yes. Right? And anything else that you would give me would be a guess, right? Yes. And, ma'am, do you have, I mean, you, you, you had a lot of memory for a lot of events involving sexual instances with Mr. Alexander, yet you seem to be having problems with your memory here today. And, and you also alluded to a little bit that you have problems with your memory. Um, is this a long-standing thing that you've had problems with your memory, or is this just something that happened recently? Sustained. <coughs> your problems with your memory, is it of recent vintage? Define recent. I don't know, since you started testifying. <laughs> no, it goes back further than that. How long does it, far back does it go? I don't even know if I'd call it a problem. Well, just tell me how far back it goes. You said you were going to tell me, so tell me, please. How far back what goes? Hello, what planet are you living on? We're talking about your memory problem, right? I don't know that I'd really call it a problem. Okay. I just Is it? Have, I don't remember every single thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. Ma'am. Your memory issues. We're talking about those, right? I wouldn't even call them issues, but okay, my memory. Well, you don't want to call them problems, right? No, I don't want to call you them problems. You don't want to call them issues, right? I right? don't know. I really right? don't. You don't want to call them issues. You just told me that, right? I didn't say I don't want to. All right, so you're, can we call them issues then? Okay. With regard to these memory issues that you claim to have, when did you start having them? I can't believe she's trying to remember when her memory issues started. It depends on the type of memory issue. If it benefits you, you have a memory issue? Objection, argument, in your honor. Is, or if it hurts you, you have a memory issue? Objection, your honor. Faint. Well? When it hurts, it sometimes oh, I... Ma'am, there's no question right now. You say that you have memory problems, but it depends on the circumstance, right? That's right. And give me the factors. I don't want to know about a specific circumstance. What factors influence your having a memory problem? 
Um, usually when men like you are screaming at me or grilling me or someone like Travis doing the same. Ooh, 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 the claws are coming out now, aren't they? Oh my God, how low can you get? Oh, God. I mean, she murders somebody horrifically in cold blood and she wants a belly rub and she wants a nice little cushion to lie on and she wants, you know, some milk and cookies and, and a, a nice little nap. And a nice little massage. Yeah, yeah, she can kiss my ass, I'm afraid. So that affects your memory problems, it right? It does, it makes my brain scramble. So you're saying that it's the core, it, basically what you're saying is Mr. Martinez's fault that you can't remember things that are going on. It's not your fault. I'm not saying that. You're saying that, isn't it? No, I'm not saying that. Is there something about a certain decibel of the voice that creates problems? Decibel, tone, content, sort of a combination of those factors. When? Objection. What? Just, just a stunt. Your approach. You may. Okay, those viewers, subscribers, um, supporters in the know, can you please tell us what happened there? Because as far as we know, um, something happened off camera and Nermi said objection your honor this is just a stunt and we just cut back to Martinez folding his arms not sure what happened there yeah I'm not sure any of our viewers know yeah please let us know make a note of this timestamp please cheers what time did you get off of work for me in the afternoon well, hold on let me finish the question what time did you get off of Mimi's on January 21 of 2008. A time in the afternoon. Can you be more specific no. about the time? Why not? Because I don't think I was looking at my watch or my phone or any other clock. Where did you go after you left Mimi's? Um, I went to Travis's house. You went directly to Mr. Alexander's house, right? That's right. And what time did you get over to his house? I'm sorry? Couldn't hear me? I couldn't hear you. What time did you get over to his house? About 20 minutes after I left Mimi's. And when you got there, ma'am, did you walk in? Yes. Front door? Yes. Was it open? Yes. Was it unlocked? Yes. And you said you walked in and you went straight up the stairwell, right? Um, yes. And you didn't say a word going up the stairwell, did you? I'm sorry? You didn't say a word going up the stairway, did you? Um... I don't remember. Didn't call out his name, right? I might have, yes. And ma'am, in January 21 of 2008, you and he were broken up, weren't you? Yes. So it wasn't like you were boyfriend and girlfriend that you went over every day, right? One of the indicators of Jody's lack of, shall we say, social skills is the fact that she has no you know, concepts of boundaries. She seems to walk in and out of Travis's house willy-nilly. Just whatever time she pleases, whether she's seen him or not, whether they're boyfriend and girlfriend or not, whether they're having sex or not, she thinks she can just waltz in and out whenever she wants. And you just don't do that. She had no right to do that, and I don't think Travis would have just walked into her house willy-nilly. I mean, even if, you know your boyfriend and girlfriend with someone, you know. You knock on the door, you you go in, even if you're that familiar, and you say, hiya, it's me, where are you? But she's trying to tell us that she opened the door, went in, went up the stairs, can't recall if she says anything, walked in and saw him, um, you know, having a five-knuckle shuffle over these disgusting pictures. That never happened. No, it didn't. But I'm betting that, you know, her just walking into his house and thinking she owned the place happened several times. Oh, I'm sure it happened dozens more of time, times. More times than we can count. Yeah. 
I was, we were not boyfriend girlfriend, but I went over almost every day. Pardon? We were not boyfriend girlfriend, but I did go over almost every day. You're mumbling, I didn't hear you. We were not boyfriend girlfriend, but I did go to his house almost every day. And on this particular day, what were you there to do? He needed help putting boxes up in his attic. And had you talked to him about this previously? Yes. Was it via text message or was it via some other method? I don't remember. It was discussed. Was it via telephone? Probably. Well, ma'am, how could you discuss it by telephone if you were working at Mamie's? It was discussed previous to my shift. So, what time did you discuss it then? Um, it was... It had to do with, well... It wasn't that day. It was weeks ahead of time. I'm totally flattering. I can't even come up with a good lie. <laughs> it was about the Christmas things that were in his attic. So, now it wasn't that day that you discussed them, right? Um, once I got there, we were discussing it. I want to know if that day that you claim this happened, if there was a telephone call in the morning. I don't remember that part. And if back then, what was your number? I've already heard it, but... A314021901. And that would have been the number that you called him on, right? That you used to call him. That would have been the telephone that you would have used to call him, right? Usually, yes. That was your telephone, right? Yes, that was my cell phone. And you say, well, normally I would, I would use that to call him. Pray tell, what other circumstances would there be that you wouldn't use your cell phone to call him? Landlines. Pardon? Landlines. You had a landline also at your home? Right? Um, there were landlines in the homes where I lived. Pardon? There were landlines in the homes where I lived. I'm not asking about the homes where you lived. I'm asking about the homes on January 20, your home on January 21 of 2008. There was not a landline in that home. There was not one, was there? No, there was not. So you would have had to use your cell phone to call him, right? I probably would have used my cell phone if I called him that day, yes. And now you're saying you're not sure if you called him that morning then, right? Um... I don't think I did because he didn't get up early. Right. So if, you know, you're leaving work and you go in to um, move these boxes, you give him a ring first and say, hey, you're free. Yeah, you're, or are you busy? Yeah. Um, you don't just turn up and say, hey, Travis, today's a great day for me to move these boxes. Why don't we move these boxes? You know, he might have something on. Yeah, I mean, you actually phone and you plan it. This is another example of her lack of social skills. When you're going to do something with someone, you call them and you prearrange it. You do not just turn up. Doesn't matter whether you are able visioned or whether you have raisins for eyes. It's the same rules for everybody. What if he wasn't in? Yeah, exactly. Ma'am, so you're saying you didn't call him that morning, right? I don't recall if I did or not. Well then, I thought you said that there was some agreement or arrangement for you to go over there that day. There was. All right, what was the arrangement? The arrangement was after Christmas, when he had packed up all of his things to put him in the attic. No, no, I'm not asking about that. I'm asking about the arrangement about the time when you were going to go over. I don't really care about what the activity was. What was the arrangement about when you were going to come over, how that was going to work? Just whenever it made sense. So whenever it made sense, you were going to go over that day? Yes, that day was a good day for us. And you don't know if you talked to him in the morning about telling him that it was that day that you were going to be over? I don't remember. And if you didn't talk to him, your coming over would have been a surprise then after working at Mimi's, right? No, he was expecting me the first time. Hang on a second, something doesn't make sense to me. If he was expecting her to go round after work, then why would he be masturbating? Exactly, and why would he be doing it to a, a child's picture Yeah. if he knew she was on her way? And if he was expecting her and he knew she was just going to walk in? Exactly. That, that does not make sense. No, it makes no sense whatsoever because it's not true. How would he be able to expect you the first time 
if you didn't call him in the morning to let him know you were going to be over that day? Because it was already discussed. When was it discussed? Tell me. It was discussed multiple times in the weeks following Christmas. I understand that it was discussed multiple times in the weeks following Christmas, but in those multiple times following Christmas, did you pick a date? January 21, let's just pick December 26. You said to him, on January 21 of 2008, I'm going to come over and help you with the Christmas decorations. Is that how it worked? No. No, it didn't, did it? You needed, if you had an arrangement, there would have been an agreement, wouldn't there have been? We weren't that formal. So what exactly is it you're trying to say to us, you raisin-eyed weasel turd, that you and Travis were telepathic? No, she, she's just playing on it. Yeah. Plain stupid, plain dumb. Yeah. Plain arsehole. Well, so you, but you just told me that you talked about it though, right? It was discussed multiple times, yes. Right. And so though all those multiple times that you discussed it, you agreed that it was going to be January 21, 2008, after you got off work from Mimi's. Is that the agreement? Or is that the discussion? I don't think it was that specific at all. So what was the discussion then? Just whenever we got together to do it. So then he wasn't expecting you like you said he was when you came over that day. He was hoping I would come over to help him with those things. Ma'am, you keep saying he was hoping. How do you know he was hoping if he didn't even know you were coming over? Based on our discussions. So in your discussions you told him, I want you to hope that I come over on the 21st? I didn't tell him that. Of course you didn't. The point is you really didn't... You can't tell us anything about the circumstances of that day, can you? That's not true. Well, you can't tell us about the time, right? Not a precise hour and minute. You no. can't tell us what you worked at Mimi's, right? What hours, right? Not the precise hours. You can't tell us what time you got over to his house, right? Not the precise minute. You can't tell us if there was even a telephone call that morning, right? I don't remember if there were calls that morning. Right. Can't tell us anything. But you can tell us that you walked in and then there was this issue and you went in to help him with the Christmas decorations, right? Yes. And after uh, you helped him with the Christmas decorations, you left, right? Yes. Drove away, right? Yes. <laughs> Came back, right? Yes. And according to you, that's when you saw Mr. Alexander engaged in this masturbatory activity, right? Yes. And according to you, there were multiple uh, photographs, but you saw one of them in particular, correct? Yes. Being as she has become rather accomplished at, some would say, breaking and entering into Travis's house, and given her past sexual proclivities, she could qualify to become two types of burglar, a cat burglar and a turd burglar. Yeah, that's true, but what did they do with turds? Flush them down the toilet. Exactly. And you then left, right? Yes. And you left in your car, right? Yes. And you went home and started driving around, right? I went home, threw up, cried, then drove around. Sure, you did all these kinds of things that afternoon, right? Yes. In your car, right? I didn't throw up in my car. What's that? I didn't throw up in my car. No, you, you drove off in your car, correct? Yes. Well, isn't that problematic since you were driving Mr. Alexander's car? I wasn't driving his car yet. We were supposed to swap cars. Well, he didn't have a car that day, right? We were switching cars. Ma'am, did he have a... My question is... He did have a car. Isn't it true he did not have a car that day? No, he had a car. Well, ma'am, let's take a look at some of the text messages, okay? Okay. I'm going to give you two sets, one with his responses and one without, all right? Okay. Take a look at uh, Exhibit 461. Those are text messages between your telephone number and that of Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. And the incoming means that that's your message coming in to him, correct? Mm -hmm. 
Ma'am. Um, wait, say that again. I'm sorry. I was Do you reading. remember previously testifying that when incoming was on these text messages that that meant that that was you calling or that was you leaving the message? That was me sending the message. Right. And the outgoing is him sending it out, right? Yes. You also talked a little bit about the timing on there, right? The times that are designated? Yes. You indicated that, well, it was seven hours off, right? Yes. That copy that I've given you has taken the time to write down the actual times minus seven hours, right? Yes. Go ahead and review it to make sure that the times that are on there yes, are correct. Right. I believe. Well, we don't want you to believe. Take your time, subtract seven from there, and see if that's correct. Because it's important here, we don't want you to believe. I'm pretty sure they're correct. When you say pretty sure, it means you're not sure to me. No, I said I'm pretty sure. And it does not include his responses on there, or his outgoing messages, does it? Yeah, it looks like it's blocked out. Right. Take a look at Exhibit 462. Look at the faces on them. Yeah. They look worried. Well, they've got reason to worry, because they are watching um, Martinez peel the skins you know, off a very, very rancid onion here. Oh. And what he finds underneath is going to stink to high heaven. I can't wait. I, I, well, I'm not really looking forward to the stink, to be honest. Well, no, but, but I'm the, looking forward to The process forward of him, him peeling the skin off, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm skin looking forward to. Skin of the onion, to. not her skin. Yeah. Although that would be nice as well, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, right? Except that this one includes... His response is on there, right? Yes. Okay. The times are also written in there, correct? Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, those are the <coughs> accurate times that are written in there. Those are the accurate times that that message was either outgoing or incoming, right? Um, that is right. Okay. Hang on, let me check. Yeah, they look, they look like they match. Okay. Four sixty-one, your honor. 61 is admitted. Take a look at uh, exhibit 461. And uh, let's talk about the times first. Do you see that, although it says 12208 at 003850, someone has written <coughs> 121 538 p.m. because of the seven hour time difference that you've talked about previously on direct examination, right? Yes. And when we talked about, it's got your name on there, right? That's right. It's got your telephone number on there, right? Right. And then it has the time of January 21st at 5.38 p.m., right? Yes. And then it says, you say, I can't remember. Am I coming in for you on Wednesday at 10.30? Isn't that what it says? Yes. <coughs> then... You see the next one at 6.41 p.m., right? You claim that you have already left Mimi's Cafe in the early afternoon, right? Yes. And so... No, I didn't say early. I said sometime in the afternoon. But you can't tell us the time, right? That's right. But at 6.41 p.m., you are talking about trading cars before FHE, right? Yes. Fam FHE stands for Family Home Evening, right? That's right. And Family Home Evening starts at 7 o'clock in the evening, doesn't it? I don't remember. Well, you were a practicing Mormon, weren't you? Yes, sort of. Ding! There you go. Oh, yeah. Only a practicing Mormon when it suited her. Yeah, but we all know the reason why. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you attended Family Home Evenings. You were telling us about that, right? Yes, I did. And you attended them more than once, right? Yes, I did. And of all of those times that you attended, didn't they start at 7 o'clock? I don't remember. They were in the evening, but I don't remember the time. Would they have started at 10 o'clock at night? No, they were not too late. How long? Isn't it true that they lasted about an hour, family home evenings? Yes, roughly an hour. And then the people that were there, the singles that were there, would get together and get involved in some sort of social activity, right? Yes. Bowling, that sort of thing, right? 
My word never went bowling. Movie, something like that. My word never went to movies. Going out to dinner. It was usually at the church. Or, but it could also be at people's houses, right? Yes. And then at 7.19 p.m., you're sending him a text. Never mind, one of the stores I need to go to closes at 8 p.m., I'll just go tomorrow, right? That's right. That's evening now, right? Yes. You said that this incident involving uh, the masturbatory conduct occurred in the afternoon, right? It did. So it would have happened before 7.19 p.m., right? Yes. And you were already gone. You were wherever, right? Yes. And you told us, though, that no, he kept calling you and kept calling you. And then you said you called him back, right? Yes, I did. And then you went out and got him some something from, uh, I think it was Starbucks or something, and you brought him something over. Do you remember saying that? Not that day. Well, then you went over to his house, though, right? I did. And you went over, and then you had sex with him, right? Yes. What time did you go over to his house? It was in the evening. What time? Don't know the time. So she expects us to believe that she found him masturbating to um, images of a child. And then at 7.19 p.m., she sends him a very, very, you know, convivial text, if you like, you know, saying that she'll go to a store tomorrow. Now, the only text I would have sent him was to say, bugger off, you dirty nonce. Well, yeah, but wouldn't you say, I mean, I wouldn't even wait that long no. to send that kind of text. Child's Protective Services and the police. But this ju just goes to show you how she hasn't thought her lies through and how she hasn't thought of the possible connotations that can spin from those lies and the avenues that she has blocked off for herself. If you are a psychopath and you're planning something, you have to plan for every single opportunity. And she hasn't even begun to. She didn't even attempt to. Yeah, but she's also very contradicting herself a lot. She is. Yes, she is contradicting herself because she's finding it hard to keep her answers straight. Yeah. Well, if he's going to family home evening, he's not going to be around. If it starts, assume it starts at 7. He's not going to be around at 7 o'clock, is he? Restate your question. Restate. If... Just for hypothetically speaking, man, if family home evening starts at 7 o'clock, he's not going to be home at 7 p.m., is he? Objection is since be there. If he went, then he wouldn't be. I'm not asking if he went. If it starts at 7 o'clock in the evening, he would not have been home then, right? Objection assumes facts. I mean, that was the deep idea that he was there. He went to FAG. It wouldn't necessarily mean that because it doesn't mean that he went. But that and night, he... I'm saying hypothetically. That means assume okay, that yes. he went to family home evening, and if it started at seven, he wouldn't have been at his house, right? That's right. And if he has become involved in this masturbatory conduct, why are you worried about trading cars with him? I think he wanted to trade the car. Man, this is not him writing that out there, is it? I wanted to do it before FAG. He wanted to trade the car. Well, why don't we take a look at his, which is 462. This is the one that includes his responses, right? Yes. Take a look at it and see who's concerned about trading cars. It indicates the back and forth involving the car, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I move for the admission of exhibit number 462. No objection. 462 is admitted. Ma'am, do you know who Alice Laviolette is? Yes. She's somebody that is assisting you in this case, isn't it? Yes. Isn't it true that you told her that the masturbatory, uh, the masturbatory conduct involving Mr. Alexander took place while he was on the computer? No, I never said that. Isn't it true that you've heard a statement from her indicating that you told her that the masturbatory conduct took place while he was on the computer. No, I've never heard her say that. 
Ma'am, were you here at a hearing? Objection, Your Honor. Ma'am, isn't it true that you heard Ms. LaViolette indicate that you told her that you saw Mr. Alexander masturbating to images on a computer? No, I heard you say that in the hearing. Well, ma'am, do you remember that I played a snippet with her voice on it? Yes, but I couldn't understand yeah. it. Bullshit. Thank you. Did you hear that snippet? Yes or no? I heard it, but I didn't understand it. I'm not asking you if you understood it. Isn't it true that you were here when that snippet was played? Yes. And that snippet involved whether or not she had ever told the prosecution that you told her that you saw Mr. Alexander masturbating to images on a computer. That's right. Let me go ahead and uh, continue with the uh, text messages. This is now exhibit 462. And it includes the outgoing, which is Mr. Alexander's text messages, right? That's right. And we were talking about exchanging cars before going to FHE, Family Home Evening, right? Yes. And ma'am, you did indicate something about whether or not you, you called them, or did you say you did or did not call him that morning? I said I don't remember. So it could be true that you did not call him at all that morning. Objection, no question. One of our YouTube fam and a beloved mate of ours, Annika, dropped us a link on our last video to an interview that uh, Kirk Nermy did with Court TV a few years ago uh, with regards to Jody Arias um, and about the struggles he faced during and after the trial. That was really interesting. Yeah. With this in mind, and we're going to try and be a bit kinder to the guy. I mean, we're, we're already, you know, giving him a lot of latitude, aren't we, because of what he went through. Yeah. Um, we're not going after him half as hard as we are Jennifer oh. Wilmot, Jody, and in the future, Alice the Toilet. Absolutely. But the thing that precipitated this was I was just wondering, you've, you've got to think here, because by this point of the trial, Nermi just wants off this case and his heart isn't in it, but he's got to do his job. He knows that she's going to get eviscerated. So this has got to be mixed feelings for him because he must be kind of worrying about, you know, how this case is going, you know, certainly for his career long term. But also he's getting a queer sort of satisfaction from seeing her get ripped apart by Juan Martinez. Yeah, but don't forget, he probably advised her to try and go another way, but she was adamant about going the self-defence route. Yeah, just going to say, there's no advising Jodie Arias. She does what she wants, and she will not listen to anyone unless they are blowing lots of smoke down Brown Street. So, it is true that, that you do not know if you called him that morning... So, well, let me do this. It could be you did not call him that morning. It could be because I don't remember. And again, is this issue with your lack of memory because of the questions, the way they're being posed? No. Is it have to do with the volume of the person asking you the questions? No, I think it's the length of time. Is it, is it yes or no, the volume? Then that would be no. So at 7.20, you send her or send him a text message. Never mind, one of the stores I need to go closes at 8. I'll just go tomorrow. So that was one minute later. It's the same message that you sent before, correct? That's correct. And then Mr. Alexander sends you a text message at 7.24 p.m., right? Right. And he says, I got a ride from some peeps in the ward now. You can just go get it. Let me know when you made the exchange. Isn't he telling you that he went to the family home evening there? Yes. So he did go to the family home evening, right? I'm assuming. Well, there's nothing else that's indicated here other than family home evening, right? That's right. And family home evening, from your experience, when you were going, how long does it last? Usually about an hour. 
depends and, on the event. Sometimes there are special events that go longer. And then there are other events that may come along afterwards, right? I don't know. I, I usually went home after FHE. I'm willing to bet my left nut and half my Johnson that not only did Travis go to a lot of these family and home evenings, he also hosted a lot of them as well. Oh yeah, and I bet you it made her insanely jealous because she didn't want to share him with anybody. Exactly. To your knowledge, ma'am, these family home evenings, did they end after the hour or were there chances sometimes, even though you may not have attended, that they would go on longer than that? Objection calls for speculation is what happened on January 21st. Overall, that was not the question. The power is immense! I guess that's always a chance. Well, I'm asking from your knowledge when you were gone. Typically, we all dispersed. It was a Monday night. We didn't hang out too late. Okay. Then, at 7.25, you send him a text message that appears to be in response to that one, right? Because it's one minute later, right? Yes. And you say, I'm almost asleep. We'll see, right? Right. And what you're talking about is exchanging the car, right? Yes. The big concern here is exchanging the car, right? Yes. It doesn't have anything to do with what you claim you saw, right? Um, we're talking about the car in this text message. Right. It doesn't. And the point here is, is that you're talking about very pedestrian issues such as exchanging a car. You're not talking about, Travis, I saw you masturbating or anything like that, right? It wasn't a pedestrian issue with Travis. Pardon? The car was not a pedestrian issue with Travis. Well, so you're equating this issue with uh, the car the same as him masturbating to images as kids. Is that what you're saying? Not, not by a long shot. No, that's not what I'm saying. Then, he's talking about you obviously don't need it that bad. I got a ride so you could go get the car. Now you're going to sleep? That's what he tells you, right? Yes. He's made or tried to make arrangements for you to pick up your car, right? Um, I don't remember which car I was driving. Well, he didn't have a car because he got a ride with some of somebody else, right? That's not why he got a ride. Well, when he's riding with somebody else, his car's not with him, right? That's right. And so he's without a car at family home evening or wherever it is that he went, right? Yes. You have a car, right? Yes. His car, right? I don't remember which car I was driving. Once again, the complete contrast, the difference between her going into so much detail and oversharing when Nermi was questioning and just her complete lack of cooperation and her, you know, emerging sociopathy, psychopathy, whatever you want to call it, to that jury. Well, yeah, but also there's, the reason is with Nermi, it benefited her. Yes. But with Martinez, it doesn't benefit her. It exposes her for what she is. And on, that is why she doesn't want to cooperate. On the contrary, it should benefit her because she is not just answering his questions. She is testifying before that jury. And if she starts being uncooperative, stops responding or, or, or is non-responsive, then the jury is going to take notes. And already the jury is seeing exactly what she's been doing over the past eight days. And that's just blatantly lying complete natural barn liar yeah well it wouldn't have been his car because you wouldn't have needed to exchange his car for his car right it would have been mine or his right so you're driving your car right Objection. i've already said that i don't remember which car i'm driving there you indicated previously that after this happened you went home and he kept trying to call you over and over right um, I had voicemails from him or missed calls. It means he kept trying to call you over and over again, right? Right. Whether he left voicemails or whatever, he kept trying to call you, right? I will, yeah, he did. And you didn't respond to those calls, right? 
Not immediately that I remember. Well, oh, I was in the visitation center, the visitor center, me? so I had my phone volume off. You were what? I was at the visitor center. What visitor center are you talking about? The one next to the Mesa Temple. And is that where you went after this incident happened? That's where I ended up after driving. Is, it, is this where you were almost asleep? Um, no, this was after the fact. So now you're back at home. Yes. Right? And in between then and, well, in between what you say you saw and when you were home, that's when you have all these calls, right? From the time I ran out of his house, he called. From the time you ran out of his house till what time at night are these calls coming in? Till I called him back. When? What time? Uh, as soon as I left the visitor center, I called him. Right. So you're sure that there's a bunch of calls that he made to you, and then they sort of piled up, whether they're voice messages or missed calls, and then you returned his call, right? That's how I remember it, yes. Okay. Actually, it, that's not the way it really went on that day. Um, isn't it true, ma'am, that there were actually five calls that day between you and him, where he called you five times and you called him back five times? Did you know that? That there were, there were many more than five. There may be five from his cell phone. I'm asking cell phone to cell phone, and you're saying that at that time you only had your cell phone, right? I only had my cell phone. Right. At the visitor's center. Right. And he left you five calls, or he left you calls, right? Yes. And actually there were only five calls from him all day long to you on the 21st. Isn't that true? That's not true. Isn't it true there was only five return calls from you on that day? That might be true. And in fact, when you say that he was calling you all the time, actually didn't it go this way that you called him at 3.53 in the evening, or the afternoon, didn't you? That sounds accurate. And then you called him again at 4.09 in the evening, didn't you? That sounds accurate. And he returned your call at 4.29, right? I believe he did. And then you called him back at 4.53, right? That sounds accurate. Well, I thought you said that there was this issue that you were not returning his call. It looks like you're returning his call, and he's calling you back. Well, that's probably a cell phone. Bruh. Well, what difference does it make if it's a cell phone or not? Isn't that a telephone call? Yeah, but he has a landline that he called me on frequently. Right, but I'm talking about, on that day, the calls that were made. What was his landline number, man? I don't have it memorized because it was just in my phone as Travis Alexander. So you, you, call, he call, you called him at 4.53, and then it true p.m., and he returned your call then at 4.54 p.m. Do you remember that? I don't recall that, spe that specific, but... Isn't it true he then called you back at 5.11 p.m.? Remember that? Not specifically. How about him calling you back at 5.20 p.m.? I don't remember specifically. And how about him calling you back at 5.48 p.m.? I just know he called me a lot that day. And then you returned his call at 5.53 p.m. Do you remember any of that? The time sounds accurate. I'm guessing she wasn't banking on him having the time of those calls. Well, no, I'm sure she thought he just had probably messages, the text, but yeah. not the actual times. And that's where she's coming unstuck. I mean, even back then, uh, 2008, calls were logged, it's digital. Yeah, and you can get any kind of data now. Yeah, so they would have been able to, you know, not only find out you know the times that the calls were made whether they were incoming or outgoing but they'd be able to find out you know exactly which number called you know that so that technology has been in existence for years of course it has so how she could have failed to realize that and why she concocted this bollocks about the visitor center <laughs> you know i don't know but she's not very clever is she no not at all
Well, then, if we go then to 462, which is the text messages, you have these calls, and then it picks up with text messages. You see that? Yes. The communication does, right? Yes. So there was never a time when, as you said previously, where you and he were not communicating. You're either communicating by telephone or by text message, aren't you? No, there's a gap. Well, you said that it was right that you called him at 5.53 p.m., right? You just said that that sounds right. It sounds about right. I don't remember the times. Right. And then the first message after this call that you said sounds right at 5.53 p.m. is at 6.41, right? Yes. Less than an hour later, right? Um, the text, yes. And then there's one at 7.19. Right? Yes. And if we say, hypothetically speaking, that family home evening starts at 7, he's already at family home evening by the time that he sends you this text at 724, right? That's right. You then say, at 729 p.m., I fell asleep and a phone call woke me up, right? What date is that? The 21st, man. That's right. Okay. I fell asleep and a phone call woke me up. I thought you said you were at the LDS Center off of uh, Dobson and uh, Southern. Not by this time. I, well, I thought you were asleep. I went home and crashed. I'd been crying and I had a migraine. So, when did you go to sleep? Give us a time. I don't have a time that I fell asleep. I went to sleep after I went, came, left the visitor center. Well, when did you have time to sleep if you're calling him back and he's calling you, and then right after that, you begin texting back and forth? When is it that you find the time to sleep? Well, I didn't sleep for a long period of time. I just zo dozed off. Well, you do say at 7.25 p.m. that you're almost asleep. We'll see about this car transfer thing, right? Right. And then you put the Z's on there that indicates you're going to sleep, right? I was very tired, yes. And so you went to sleep. You say you went to sleep, right? He, I, I was laying there very tired, and I think I fell asleep. Well, then you say at 7.29, four minutes later, I fell asleep, and a phone call woke me up. That's when I sent you a text. That's what you say, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, that is weird, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it seems so little space of time. Hang on, let's just jump back and have a look. So, here we go. The timestamp here at the top is partially hidden at the top left, but it says 7.25 p.m. And it says, I'm almost asleep. We'll see Zed's. 7.27, two minutes later, Travis sends a text. 7.29, she says, I fell asleep and a phone call woke me up. What? How, how the hell do you asleep, fall asleep in four minutes and then have a phone call woke you? Does that make sense to you? Well, no, because, and if you're so tired, a phone call wouldn't even wake you up. I mean, you know, how could she have expected Travis to, to have bought that? You know, like four minutes before saying she was almost asleep and then four minutes later saying, I fell... What? She probably thought Travis believed the lies as much as everyone else. This woman has been eating too many of her own bloody marshmallows, I tell you. Yeah. Well, when is it you're sleeping? What's waking you up between those four minutes? What's going on? I don't on? think I'm sleeping right then. I don't know. I fell asleep. He wanted me to get the car. But he's at family home evening already. And he doesn't care because he's already at family home evening, isn't he? He was a little upset because he got a ride because he thought I was going to go get it. But it didn't happen, did it? No. And the big point going on here is not talking about anything that may have happened. You're not saying you're upset about anything. You're just talking about this car being exchanged, right? We're talking specifically about the car exchange and the text message. And you don't say, I'm upset, we need to talk, or anything like that, do you? No. You say you have a really bad headache, 
you, that you can barely move, right? Yes. And that's at 7.36, right? Yes. And then there's a gap of approximately two hours or an hour and 45 minutes, which could be with an activity with family home evening, right? Yes. And he says, all right, I'll get it tomorrow then, right? He says, for me to get it tomorrow. All right, get it tomorrow then, right? Yes. In other words, make the whatever exchange of cards that's going to happen, let's just do it tomorrow, right? Yes. Or have you do it tomorrow, right? Right, whichever. Which indicates you aren't going to get together that night, are you? At the moment, yes. Not at the moment. It says, do it tomorrow. Isn't that what it says? When that text was sent, yes. Okay, but then... You want to talk to him, right? Yes. And that's at 9, 16 p.m. You say, can you talk right now? And he says, no, not right now, right? Yes. Presumably, if he went to family home evening, I'm not saying that he did, that's probably what he's doing. If he did go, right? If he did go. If he Maybe. did go, if right? If family home evening is still going on at that hour. I don't know, I don't think that has got anything to do with him being at family home evening, do you? No, I think he might have been pissed off with her. Yeah, that was my thought, because when she says, can you talk right now? Um, usually you'd, you'd say, not right now, sorry. Yeah. But you just said, you're not right now. Or he could have said, I'll call you back when I'm free. Yeah. That's what you say when you're not mad at someone. Yeah, you do, but he didn't. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think he was probably a bit sore at her for jerking him around. Well, wouldn't you be? <laughs> Definitely. And then, but previously, ma'am, you told us that he was the one that wanted to talk to you, right? Didn't you tell us that? That he kept calling, calling, calling until you relented. And then you went over, right? He did want to talk to me, yes. Right. But it looks here that, like, you want to talk to him, doesn't it? I do now, yes. And then you're still not together at 11.33... And you sent him a message, how long, right? That's right. How long is he going to be out, is what you're asking him, aren't you? No, how long till he is ready to talk? Well, that's part of, given what we've seen about this relationship, isn't that part of your jealousy because you want to know what's going on with him that night? Sustained. Many a true word sustained in court, eh? Oh, yeah, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty, plenty more to come. Probably, yeah. Ma'am, how long, that's you saying, how long before we can talk, right? Isn't that what it means? Yes. And then he says to you, and the times aren't there, but he does, and by that I mean they weren't written in. It says, did you use my phone this morning without asking, right? Yes. So if you got together with him, it was after 11.33, after he got done doing whatever he was doing, right? What was that question? If you got together that evening, it was after he got done with whatever he was doing. That's right. And so it doesn't seem like he's in a hurry to talk to you, does it? I don't know. It doesn't seem like he's all this upset. Would, you know, like this upset that you portrayed him, that he really wanted to talk to you about this issue that you say that you saw him engaged in, right? Objection causes speculation. Sustained. There are gaps here where, where um, he's doing whatever he's doing and you're doing the, the asking how long, right? That's right. He then asks you whether or not you used his phone in the morning without asking, right? Yes. And you tell him that you did, right? Yes. And you ask why, and he says nothing, right? Yes. There's an issue about the deposit, and in fact, you're asking him if he made the deposit, right? Yes. And he told you that he did, right? Yes. Is he giving you money there? What's the date? Pardon? What was the date on that one? The 22nd. I think... I don't know what we were referring to there. Well, you do say your text message is, text message does say, did you make the deposit? Yes. And he said yes. And then you said what? Thank you. I'll make it up to you soon. It looks like he lent you money there, doesn't it? Yes. 
Any idea how much money he lent you? He lent me money in small increments. I don't remember. And he would do it if you needed it, right? If he could, he would, yes. And if you needed it, right? Yes. Hold on a minute. Didn't she say in a previous video that she lent Travis money on a few occasions? Yeah, she tried to make out that she was, you know, lending him money as opposed to the other way around. And I'll tell you something, I'm betting that that money that Travis lent to her only went that one way. He never got it back. Oh, no. Now, the next day, that same day at 3.36 in the afternoon, you say to him, I'm going to need a ride. I'm off at 4 p.m. Text me. Still the issue with the car, right? Yes. Where's your car? Um, probably parked at his house. How'd you get to work? He, he sometimes he drove me and sometimes I carpooled with a co-worker. So what happened on this particular day? I don't remember. What time did you get to work? I don't remember. So I usually worked in the morning, but sometimes I worked evenings also. So in this day, you're going to get off at 4 o'clock, right? Well, in theory, if business permits. But that's what it says there, though, right? Yes. And this is at 3.36, you wanted to pick you up, right? Yes. Um, how long was your shift usually? Four, six, eight hours? Um, depending on the flow of business, typically it was four to six hours. All right. And then at 4.04, you send him another text message and you say, scratch that. They're keeping me here till 5 p.m. Can you pick me up then? The lunch offer from my voicemail still stands. What are you talking about? For him to pick me up. Pardon? For him to pick me up after work? No, I'm asking about the lunch offer. I'm not asking about him picking you up. I felt really bad for him and everything that happened. Why if he's a nonce? So, I offered, I was just trying to make him feel better because if I were in his shoes, I'd want to jump off a bridge at this point. So what about the lunch offer? What are you talking about? That's what it was. I offered to get him lunch. Well, it's four o'clock in the afternoon though. Lunch usually is noon, right? Well, not for Travis. And then he says, sure, I'm almost off, yay, are you eating? If so, just sit on the, in the camera, right? Right. I hope she didn't make him her own brand of s'mores, because if she did, he'd be rushing to the restaurant toilet throwing up. Throughout this whole text message in between you and him, there's no discussion about anything that may have happened on the 21st, is there? Not in text messages, definitely not. The answer is no, right? No. And in terms of the phone calls that you claim that were being made, there wasn't this barrage of phone calls from him that you didn't respond to. Actually, it was more give and take, wasn't it? He left a barrage of phone calls at one period of time, yes. Pardon? He did. He left a barrage of phone calls. Well, then let's just take a look at his phone right now, okay? So that we can see it. I'll see you back here at 325. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. All rise. So while the jury are having their customary plate of green beans, you got to wonder what they took. I mean, you know, they're obviously not allowed to discuss the case, but you got to wonder what they're thinking, at least, you know. Well, they're thinking of all the questions they want to ask really depends on the perception i mean are they perceiving you know martinez to be over aggressive do they think it you know are they thinking that the way he's questioning her is unnecessary because remember you got to remember up until now she's been treated with kid gloves hasn't she yeah and at the moment you know the gloves aren't completely off at the moment but there are some you know pretty good jabs and right crosses being thrown aren't there oh, you know metaphorically you know, like like we keep saying, it's the Jody show. But yeah. what she doesn't realise is she's going up against someone like Martinez and she thinks she can swing it with him and she can't. Yeah. And you know something, she's making herself look ridiculous. <laughs> oh yeah. Be because Martinez, you know, laying bare these lies and just like confronting her with the facts that are known, which, you know, more often than not are completely you know the opposite of what she is relaying 
yeah and that's why she's becoming so evasive and so sometimes not even answering the question yeah and the time will come soon when she becomes a bit more confrontational and very very defensive um <laughs> that's going to be good yeah Nowhere in your journal do you ever mention anything about Mr. Alexander in this incident that you claim involving masturbatory conduct, correct? That's correct. Take a look at uh, Exhibit 463. This is a listing of telephone calls in, between you and Mr. Alexander, or from Mr. Alexander's telephone. Okay. I understand that those are not your own records, right? That's right. And, um, and so I, I don't expect you to vouch for the uh, authentication aspect of it, but we did previously discuss the calls that were involved between you and Mr. Uh, Alexander, and uh, you indicated where that seems right. The calls that we previously discussed, they're on that sheet, correct? Um, not all of the calls, but yes. The call Some are. All the calls that are there, ma'am, are the ones between you and him, correct? The ones highlighted are between him and I, yes. Right. There are other calls, but not between you and him, right? Yes. And the calls between you and him are the ones that you and I talked about and that you indicated that they seemed right, correct? They seem correct, that's right. And that sheet bears that out, correct? Yeah, the times are out of order, but I think... The times are out of order, and they're out of order because they're different switches that carried the calls, right? I don't know. But they are out of order, right? The time aren't the times are out of order. Yes. Right, but um, in terms of the calls themselves, you, would, you know, we talked about you calling him at three fifty-three p.m. You can find that on there, correct? Yes. There's a blue marking for those, right? Yes. So there's that call, right? Yes. And there is no other call on the twenty-first previous to 3.53 p.m. that you can see, right? You mean from me to him? Uh, right. Or from him to you, or from you to him. From me to him, I don't see any others before 3.53. Right. And the last call that was made by Mr. Alexander on that telephone, and we talked about these calls, was at 7, 11 p.m., right? There are no calls from his phone after that. I don't see the one at 7, 11. The last call period that he made, not just to you, but to anybody. Maybe oh, on the 21st? Confusing. Right. To anybody. Okay. That is the last call that he made, right? There may have been others that called him, but that's the last call that he made. Oh, I didn't look at who was calling who. Um, it looks like this is the last call from his cell phone on the 22nd. Or on the 21st, my apologies. Ma'am, um, this issue involving uh, your allegation that, I may have it back, your allegation that uh, Mr. Alexander was uh, engaging in masturbation while viewing uh, images of boys and girls, that was subject of a hearing back in August 8th of 2011, wasn't it? Um, I believe it was. Well, then let me show you a Pardon document me. to make sure that we're clear. And if I could have it certified. Now, take a look at Exhibit 464 and see if that refreshes your recollection as to the date of the hearing, which is on the upper right-hand corner, and then take a look at page 3 to see if that refreshes your recollection that there was a hearing involved. Yes, there's some language I don't understand, but I remember this. Right. That, I'm just asking about the date. It was August 8th, correct? Yes. And... During that, the purpose of that, that hearing involved at least an aspect of the allegation that Mr. Alexander had engaged in pedophilic conduct, right? 
world. You may answer, right? An aspect, yes. Right. And four days on August 4th, uh, before that, you tried to get somebody to lie at that hearing, didn't you? No. All right, let's, let me show you some documents. I want you to take a look at Exhibit 465. Judge, we're going to object at this point. Yes, you may have heard. Let's see if you recognize it. Can you recognize it? Look, it's a magazine, isn't it? Yes. It's your magazine, correct? Yes. Sent to you, correct? Yes. Yeah, I've heard about this. She wrote some kind of coded message into this magazine. Um, I think it was berating someone for something that they'd said. Uh, yeah. I remember this from the research we did at the beginning of this. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. God, I can't believe she did that. Yeah, she did. In the mail, and you had it in your possession at one point, right? Yes. And you had it in your possession on August 4th, correct? Um, I think I did. Pardon? I think I did, yes. I remember the admission of exhibit number 465. No, Judge. 65 is admitted. Previously, you talked to us yesterday on um, direct examination about being in jail and doing an interview with Inside Edition, correct? Yes. And in fact, you were in jail when you received this magazine, correct? Yes. It's addressed to you, correct? Yes. And with regard to this magazine, on August 4th, uh, isn't it true that an individual by the name of Ann Campbell came to visit you? Yes. And she came by and she started to visit. The visitation began at 1.36, but for you roughly around 1.30 in the afternoon, right? Yeah, it was in the afternoon. And that conversation between you and Ann Campbell lasted approximately an hour, correct? Um, it lasted a long time, from what I remember. And as part of the process, while you were there, um, one of the things that, or as, as part of the visitation, one of the things that you wanted to do was to give two magazines to Miss Campbell, correct? Yes. And the way it works is that before you give that magazine, it has to go through a guard so that they can give it out to the person, right? It has to go through a sergeant. Right. And in this case, this that's what happened with this magazine, correct? Yeah, it goes through, I'm sorry, it goes through an officer, then a sergeant, then right. another officer. But you, and bottom line though, is you wanted to give this magazine to Ann Campbell, right? That one and another one. Right. The Star magazine, correct? Yes, it was Star. Well, let's look at the other magazine. Let's take a look at exhibit number 466. Is this the magazine that you <coughs> wanted to give to Ann Campbell? 466. Oh, uh, that looks like it. Well, it's got your name as the address C, right? Uh, yes. And it is a Star Magazine, correct? Yes, that's the one. And this is the one that went along with the Photography Magazine, correct? Yes. I move for the admission of Exhibit 466. No objection. 466 is admitted. Exhibit 465 is called... Digital Photo Pro. In a Hello there magazine, correct? Yes. And you're, you, you previously indicated to us that you're very interested in photography and that sort of thing, right? I, yes, I was. And that uh, for many years prior to your arrest that you were involved in that sort of thing, right? Yes. You took photographs at weddings and all that and, and uh, other kinds of photographs, right? Yes. And here is the tag that's on there. It does have your name on there, right? Yes. Now, inside this magazine, on page six, we just look at it, leave the printed numbers to the side and the red numbers to the side, there is some writing in pencil. Can you see it? Yes. And can you tell us, if you can, what that says? Mark Stanick, 520-256-1178. A, B, C, in parentheses. And you know who Mark Stanick is, right? Yes. Mark Stanick is a producer for, or at that time was a producer for ABC News, right? Yes. Well, I don't know if he was a producer at that time. But he had visited you on occasion, right? Um, yes, about four years ago. 
right about the same time that this uh, was going on. Well, let me just show you exhibit number 467. Does that refresh your recollection as to when this individual from ABC was visiting you? I wonder if the implication that's being made here is, is she passing information to this Mark Stanick of ABC through Anne Campbell and this magazine? She could very well be. Yeah, I mean, know. if she had this hour-long meeting or however long it was with Anne Campbell and kind of secreted very, you know, um, surreptitiously this number into the magazine, no smoke without fire, is there? Definitely not. No. Yes. And what date did he visit you? July 8th, 2009 and September 17th, 2009. Okay. And that's the same individual that's mentioned there, right? Yes. You previously indicated to us that with regard to Inside Edition that they came to visit you and that you really didn't solicit them coming out to the jail to talk to you, right? That's right. And that you believe that the guard uh, pushed you into that interview, right? Inside Edition, yes. Now we're just going to take you back in time now to part five of our series. Uh, this was a mixed bag when we uh, showed the um, Inside Edition interview with her and the HLN interview. Does that look like a woman who is being, who's been pushed into an interview with a major news network? No, she looks like a willing participant. And let's face it, it's a major news network. She gets her face on the tally. She's seen by millions of people. You could not possibly push her into this, could you? Oh, of course not. You couldn't write it better for her. No. And who was that guard? What's that guard's name? I don't remember her name. It was five years ago almost. She didn't push me. She just encouraged me. Well, who was the, what's the name of this person that encouraged you? I don't remember her name. They don't wear name tags very often. But with regard to the visit involving Mark Stanick with ABC News, she had nothing to do with that, right? No, nothing to do with that one. And you took his visit, right? Yes, I did. You can refuse a visit from anybody you want, correct? Yes. And you did not refuse his visit, right? That's right. Now, let's take a look at another page. Page 20. And there are some words there on page 20. And they're kind of hard to find, but they're in pencil, right? The writings? I haven't seen them. Those are in pencil, right? It looks like it, yes. Pardon? It looks like it, yes. Well, no, take a look at it. We want to make sure. Yes, it is. And where you are living currently, they do not allow pens, right? That's right. They only allow pencils, right? Yes. And on this page, number 20, it says, read it for me. You testify so. Okay. Page 37. And you would agree that the one on page 20 is kind of hard to find. It's kind of right here near the, the spine of the book, right? It seems like it, yeah. Page 37. has some more writing on it. <coughs> you see that right there? And again, if the glare is too much, let me know and I'll work it out. It looks like it said, oh, you want me to read it? I'm sorry. Yes, please. It looks like it says, we can fix this. We can fix this, right? Right. Page 40. Has some more writing on it. And the lighting's not so good, but it says, what does it say? Looks like it says, directly contradicts what I've been saying for over a year. Okay. Page 
And the publishing date on this item is August 2011, Page correct? 43. Says what? It says you fucked up what you told my attorney the other the next day. Okay. Ah, so it appears that somebody went off script of uh, Jody's carefully, you know, constructed plan. And someone went off the reservation and she didn't like it because she couldn't control it. No, she only likes the things that she can control. Yeah. That's why she used that language. Absolutely. Um, and this is coming back to bite her. How pleasant. Then page 54. Says. Interview what? was excellent. Must talk ASAP. <clears throat> and 56. Says. What? Get down here ASAP and see me before you talk to them again and before. Doesn't seem to make much sense, but let me mark an exhibit for you. Take a look at uh, exhibit 468. This contains the pages and what was written on them, doesn't it? And if you need the book, let me know. Yes. I move for the admission of Exhibit 468. Approved. 468 is admitted. In summary, this is what um, we've just covered, correct, in the magazine? That's correct. I think she's seen too many Hannibal Lecter movies, do you? I do, considering that. Yeah. I mean, in Red Dragon, something similar happens where Lecter writes on toilet paper to the tooth fairy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, giving him tips. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Star Magazine, which is Exhibit 466. And this is addressed to you, correct? Yes. And the date? Can you see that February 6, 2012? I see July 25th, 2011 up in the corner and February 6, 2012 there. If we go to page 82, because if we look at uh, this exhibit number 468, what is written here doesn't seem to make sense, correct? Not of hand, no. But if we then go to exhibit 466, there are some numbers at the bottom of that, and they're in pencil, aren't they? Yes. And what are those numbers, ma'am? My understanding is that they're page numbers. I, that may be your understanding, but what are the numbers? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 43, 40, 56, 20, 37, 54. Okay. If we then arrange with an exhibit 468, according to those numbers, ma'am, what was she thinking trying to pull a stunt like that? Did she not even think that should be found out? Yeah, I mean, did she not even imagine that, you know, the prison officers would scrutinise every single page of what she was trying to send out there? Is she an idiot or something? Mm. Actually, that's a stupid question, isn't it? Because we know she is. Definitely. 
This is Exhibit 469, have those statements in the order as set out in the Star Magazine. Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled Exhibit 469 is admitted. Read it, please. You fucked up what you told my attorney next day directly contradicts what I've been saying for over a year. Get down here ASAP and see me before you talk to them again and before you testify so we can fix this. Interview was excellent. Must talk ASAP. So ma'am, this was written in these two magazines four days when you, when you attempted to transfer them four days before a hearing on August 8th of 2011, correct? I don't know when they were written. Well, this magazine, the Star Magazine, as well as the, the Photography Magazine, you attempted to transfer those back on August 4th, four days before this hearing, right? Just the magazines, yes. And I know you keep saying just the magazines, the magazines have your name on them, correct? Yes, I'm only allowed to release my own property. Ma'am, I understand that, but those magazines have your name on them, right? Yes. And those magazines were in your possession on August 4th of 2011, right? Yes. And those magazines you had with you when you went to meet with Ann Campbell, right? Um, I brought them almost to the visit, but I, they don't go with me to see her. Excuse me? They don't go with me to see her. They get passed off to several different officers. I understand, but you brought them from your cell, correct? Yes. And you, at that point, at some point during the visit, requested that these magazines be given to Ann Campbell, right? Yes. These two magazines that we're talking about here, correct? Correct. And that was actually done. You, and you're trying to tell us about the process. Why don't you tell us what the process is? The process is when you want to release property, you have to um, fill out a, a request. You have to state your request um, fairly specifically, what you're releasing, the title of what you're releasing. Um, at least those are the rules now. They've updated it. It was more generic then. And then it is given to an officer who inspects it and then gives it, when it passes inspection, it's given to a sergeant who approves it and then it's passed off to um, either, I think in, it's called, um, there's a control center, it's given to that officer and then it's given to a visitation officer. So when the visitor leaves, they pick up the property and go. I'm guessing she's going to tell us that a fly marshmallow wrote those numbers and statements in the magazines and she had nothing to do with it. She was completely innocent. Yeah, or she could change her mind and say it was mushrooms. Yeah, God, yeah. And that's how this... And, and you attempted to use that process to get these magazines to Ann Campbell, right? Yes. And shortly before August 4th, do you know somebody by the name of Matthew McCartney? Yes, I do. Shortly before uh, uh, this August 4th date, by shortly, I mean within the month. You know that Mr. McCartney was interviewed by the prosecutor, right? Um, I think it was around that time. You were in contact with Mr. McCartney about the interview, right? In other words, you let him know that this interview with the prosecutor was going to take place, right? I think my attorney let him know. Well, isn't it true that in a telephone that you spoke with Mr. McCartney on the telephone about the requested interview by the prosecutor, Juan Martinez. I believe that is true. And that interview took place within approximately a month of this August 11th date of the hearing, right? I wasn't told when it was taking place, so I, but it was close to that time. And Mr. McCartney is the individual that you testified about previously with whom you had this relationship with, right? Yes. And he's somebody that you dated, what, in 2001? 
2000 and 2001. And he's the individual that you said that, well, we kind of broke up because, well, why don't you tell us why you broke up with him, why you think you broke up with him. Right, please bear with us, those of you that are very familiar with this part of the trial, we're not. Is that message in the magazine intended for Matt McCartney via Anne Campbell? I wonder, because it seems logical that it is. It could very well be. Like we say, we're watching this for the first time. Be a good way to get a message out. Oh, absolutely, yeah, if uh, foolish. Yeah. Um, because he cheated on me. And you're saying that he cheated on you with somebody named Brianna, right? Bianca. Bianca. And what happened with regard to that incident is that he cheated on you, you heard about it, and you heard about it while you were at work, right? Yes. Was this at the Purple Plum? This was at Applebee's. Applebee's. And you decided to drive about an hour and a half to confront Bianca, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, this was Bert and Ernie when they first struck. When uh, they told her that uh, Matt was cheating on, on her with Bianca, yeah. Because that was Bert and Ernie as well, wasn't it? Or at least it might as well have been. I tell you what, Bert and Ernie don't half get around. Yeah, they? they do. Because you needed to find out, right? I needed to know, yes. You needed to know. Isn't that sort of the same thing that you did with Mr. Alexander in August of 2007 when you saw him kissing with somebody that you went and you asked him about what was going on the night before because you needed to know, right? Yes. And so you went up to, was it Crater Lake? Yes. And you went up to Crater Lake, and this is the place where they have uh, people living in, in, in um, not subsidized housing, but housing that is provided by the employer, right? Yes, they're like dorms. And you were able to find where this Bianca was, right? Yes. How was it that you were able to find this Bianca if you had never had contact with her? I asked um, a mutual friend, and he told me what room she was in. So Which I went mutual friend did? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, so I just went and knocked on that door. Which mutual friend did you ask? I believe his name was Steve. And is this the individual that you said that acted really gay, right? Uh, he was gay, and he was acting very frantic. Right. And you indicated that when you came over there, he started to act really frantic, right? Yes. And he started to act really... Uh, a frantic just at the side of you, right? Um, I think because I was asking about Bianca and he knew about the affair. Well, I don't think being gay has got anyth anything to do with it at all. I think one look into those raisin eyes for anyone and anyone would be frantic, wouldn't they? Yeah, just ask Harrison Ford. He saw you and you started to talk to him, right? Yes. When you started to talk to him, did t um did you immediately indicate to him that you wanted to talk about Bianca? Not about, but to. So you indicated you wanted to talk to Bianca, right? Yes. And immediately, or shortly thereafter, he started to get all flustered, right? Would that be correct or not? Not when I saw him, but when I went to her room to knock. So you start talking to him about Bianca, and he tells you what place, the room she's staying in, right? Yes. And he goes with you, right? No, he told me the wrong room. He gave, initially, when you went to see him, he, he gave you the wrong room, right? Yes. And you went to that wrong room? <coughs> yes. And that there sums up Jodie Arias in a nutshell. A monumental fuck-up beyond all proportions. And when you went to that wrong room, did you speak to the people there? I knocked, nobody answered. In the meantime, Steve had gone somewhere else, right? Yes. He had gone... To where Bianca was, right? Yes. But you didn't tell Steve why you were there, right? Just that I wanted to talk to Bianca. Right, but you didn't tell him why you wanted to talk to her, right? No, not why. No. And it was kind of an unannounced visit, right? Yes. I'll tell you something, sweetheart. I am so glad that we haven't got someone like her in our life. Oh, just, well, our lives would be a living hell if we did. Yeah, but we'd get no peace, would we? She'd just turn up and just bloody walk in. Hello, I'm here. Yeah, like she always seems to do with Travis. Yeah. Do you know something? We'd probably find her hiding in our bloody cat's climbing frame one day while we were out. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Or behind the curtains. Yeah, behind the curtains or maybe, you know, under your computer table or something. Maybe she's hiding in the plug hole in the bath. <laughs> she's one creepy cow, isn't she? Definitely. And so he took it upon himself, without any prompting from you, to give you the wrong place and then go and talk to Bianca, right? Yes. Oh. 
And then you went, and how was it that you were able to find Bianca's uh, room? I thought maybe I misheard him and transposed the numbers, so I went, I reversed two, the two last numbers. It was a three-digit three dorm, and I had the right floor, but I, didn't, I just went to the opposite number. So do you remember the number? No. So you went there, and uh, when you got to the door, you heard that there was talking inside, right? Yes. And there was talking inside. Would it be characterized as excited inside? Steve's voice, yes. Right, and this is the one that he was act you said he was sort of acting gay over dramatic, right? Yes, dramatic. And you attributed that to the fact that he was gay, though, right? Um, <coughs> it was a feminine tone, so yes. Well, no, I mean, part of what you told us before was that well, he's kind of gay, and he's kind of that he way, gay. and so that he was being dramatic, right? He is gay, and he was acting dramatic. And, and that's what you told us, right? Yes. It could have also been that it's, it wasn't because he was gay, it was because he was concerned that you were there, that he was excited, right? Well, I never said that he was... Oh, girl, give me answer. I never said he was acting that way because he's gay. I just said the tone of voice, I remember it because it was very feminine and very frantic, almost like a woman. Do you remember earlier on when I said that I'd try and stop it when she was looking unhinged? Yeah. This is the bit. Just keep a close eye on her face throughout this, you know, this last bit of the, the day. And just look at that expression there. If that is not Duper's delight... I don't know what is. Yeah, she's practically smiling. Yeah, well, she is smiling. I mean, yeah. she's having a good time at the moment. Um, well, she's reached into her imagination. I mean, you know, we know that Bianca was real. Yeah, of course we do. But we know that the manner in which she found out isn't real. She was snooping on Matt's phone again, wasn't she? So Yeah, looking up information again. Yeah, she's so bloody predictable. But, but you're the one that brought up the fact that he was gay, right? Yes. And, and explaining this to us, right? Yeah, when I was describing it. Right. And so you were able to hear his voice through the door, right? Yes. And it was an excited tone. Yes. And that excited tone could be for a myriad of reasons, but one of them was that you were there unannounced, right? That's right. And, and it could be that he was, for whatever reason, excited or... That, non, that term, he was excited that you were there, right? Yeah, it causes speculation. We don't know why he's excited. Rephrase the question. He had, his, his demeanor when you arrived changed after you asked for Bianca, right? Um, I didn't notice it change, I just noticed it different after I went to look, knock on her door. And his demeanor changed to the, the fact that he was more excited, for lack of a better term. Yes, right? frantic. And you began to knock on the door, right? Yes. Nobody answered, right? Um, no, they answered. Initially, right? Bianca answered. Oh, well, the first not door. initially. Do you that, mean the first the door? second door? Didn't you say before that you went to that door, you knocked on that door, and nobody answered initially? You heard them talking. For a second before she came to the door, yeah. So, um, so you, you were there long enough to hear them excitedly talking, right? Not her, just him. And um, how? How long were you standing there before the door was open? I'd say five seconds or less. She opened the door, right? Yes. And did you recognize her? Well, you did recognize her from her photograph, right? It looked to be the same person. Right. And you began to talk to her, right? Yeah, I asked if she was Bianca. Right. You began to talk to her, right? Yes. And you started to talk to her, and you brought up the subject of Matt McCartney, right? Yes. She didn't bring it up, right? That's right. And you started to talk to her, and you started to ask her whether or not they had a relationship, right? Yes. And you were able to determine that they did, in fact, have a relationship, right? Yes. And you were able to determine that they, in fact, had been intimate, right? She indicated they had not had sex, but intimate somewhat, yes. And, ma'am, at that time, when this was going on, you weren't living with Mr. McCartney, right? No, I was yeah. in Ashland. Pardon? I was in Ashland. And he was where? He lived at, well, he had moved away from Crater Lake. Um, he had lived at Crater Lake that summer, and now he moved back to Phoenix with his dad at that point. And, and, your, and your belief was that you and he were still boyfriend and girlfriend at the time, right? That was my belief. 
Actually, he may have had a different belief, as you came to know later, right? Yes. He did not believe that you and he had a relationship, well, had a relationship, but were not boyfriend and girlfriend at the time, right? I don't know if that was his belief. Well, you, you've spoken to him about it, right? Yes. And um, based on your conversation, do you have a belief, don't you have a belief that at that time, he didn't think that you and he were boyfriend and girlfriend? Based on that conversation, my belief was that he knew he had Pardon? messed up, and he was very sorry for it. But how long did this conversation take with Bianca? Um, we actually sat and chit-chatted for about an hour. And this was at your request, right? Initially, yeah, I initiated the contact. And, you can, and for an hour, you received information about what her relationship was with Mr. McCartney, right? He wasn't the whole conversation, but initially, you, yes. Well, you weren't there to visit with her because you'd driven an hour and a half, right? Can you say that again? Well, you weren't there just to chit-chat with her, right? That wasn't the, the point of the drive, no. I mean, you, you wanted to find out what the heck was going on with Mr. McCartney, right? Absolutely. And, um... I mean, what the hell else are they going to chat about? Here, I bought some onions from the supermarket the other day, but it didn't, they didn't look very nice, so I had to discard them and buy a pre-pack, but it was more expensive than the loose ones. I mean, is that what we're talking here? Or it could have been what they were doing at the weekend? Yeah, or, you know, how much they both like anal. <laughs> so it's, it's fair to say that this wasn't a situation where you were just sitting there chit-chatting about her job or anything like that. It was because you were interested in finding out what was going on, right? Yes. And you were satisfied after speaking to her for about an hour, what was going on? I was satisfied pretty early on. Um, Not just the hour. And in fact, isn't it true that you became a bit excited or upset during that conversation? No. At any time did you uh, raise your voice to Bianca? Definitely not. I was in her home. And um, at, in this place, Crater Lake, was what, a, an hour and a half from where you were living in Ashland, right? About 70 miles. But it's an hour and a half driving, right? I think so, yes. Yeah. About an hour and a half. And then after that, where did you go? After that, I, it was very late. I didn't want to drive the hour and a half back because I'd fall asleep. Um, so I went and stayed at a mutual friend, in a mutual friend's dorm. There were two. And what's that friend's name? Eddie. Eddie what? Eddie, Eddie Lee. And how did you know Eddie Lee? I knew him because his parents also owned a restaurant in Wairika, as did my parents at that time. And How old just, were you when this ha was happening? How old was I? Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe I was, I just turned 21. And your parents still own a restaurant, right? No, not at that time. <coughs> they had owned one up to how old were you when they I stopped? think I was 16 when they closed it the first time, 16 or 17. Right about the time you moved out of their home? Um, it was after they, I moved out after they closed it. And growing up they had more than one restaurant though, right? Yes. And how many restaurants did your family have? Um, total that I know of. Six or seven? And I bet you Gordon Ramsay hasn't visited one of them. Where's the lamb sauce? Right. And growing up, there really wasn't any financial problems, was there? Early on, there was not. And Early on, there were trips to Disneyland, for example, right? Yes, when I was very young. And uh, when you say very young, we're talking up to six, seven, or eight, right? Under 10. And during that time, it was what has been described as, a, what you've described as an idyllic sort of um, environment, right? Yes, somewhat. Uh, and then, at some point, the restaurant issue started, it, there became an issue with the restaurants, right? Yes, I believe. It. My understanding is it was an issue. And Mr. McCarty, where was he living at the time that you went to see Bianca? Um, he was living in Phoenix, Oregon with his dad. And he had a room there, correct? I believe he had his own room there, yes. And sometimes 
when we touch. Mr. McCartney, what town did he live in? Phoenix, Oregon. And after this conversation, you and he broke up, right? Yes, after he got back from Borrego Springs. Pardon? After he returned from Borrego Springs, that's where he was that night. Okay, he, he came up and where, what town did you meet in? Phoenix, is that where you met? Yes. And that's when you decided to, that was the end of it, right? You decided that, right? Um, I don't remember, it was just a lot of tears and it was obvious that the trust was gone and there was not any kind of relationship anymore. And basically that's the same reason why you and Mr. Uh, Alexander broke up because according to you, the trust was gone, right? That's right. Yes, another recurring theme in her life. I wonder how many more men would have broken her trust if she had stayed free. More to the point, how many of those men would have lost their lives as a consequence. And so, after the trust is gone with Mr. McCartney, though, you still continue sort of seeing him, don't you? There were some blurred boundaries, but we were not boyfriend-girlfriend. And in fact, you even stayed together uh, at Crater Lake or Ventana Inn uh, together after this, right? After you broke up, right? Um, we crashed in a tent for two weeks, but we were not together after, at Ventana. Um, but you did have intercourse with him after this breakup, didn't you? Do you remember telling us that on direct yes, examination? Yes, one time. One time, but you did though, right? Yes. And he continued to, did he continue to live at his parents' house? Um, he moved down to Ventana to find work also. He was looking for seasonal work. Right, and at Ventana, this is where they have the um, places to stay as part of the job, right? Yes, more employee housing. And where were you when he was at Ventana? I went to, I was hired at Ventana first, and then he applied for a job right after me, and he was hired also. And you and he were not sharing, were you sharing the same bed or not? Um, after I got housing, no, we were not. Right. Isn't it true that after you got housing, though, you would, when he wasn't around, go over to wherever he was staying and stay in his bed. He didn't have a bed, he lived in a tent, and no, that's not true. So, um, how long did you continue to see him? I'm guessing as long as her bum was hungry for man meat. Well, we were no longer romantic. We just hung out like more like friends. But you've continued to be friends up to this day though, haven't you? We've sort of lost contact, but yeah, we're still friends. And, well, you, you at least had contact with him uh, involving the uh, interview with the prosecutor, though, right? Um, I, I believe I did, but I know my attorneys did, for sure. I'm not interested in what your attorneys did. I'm interested in what you did. Isn't it true that you had contact with him, right? Yes. And when you made your trip down from um, Wairika to um, kill Mr. Alexander, you stopped in, Mon in the Monterey area, didn't you? I can't answer your question the way it's phrased. You didn't stop in the Monterey, didn't drive through the Monterey area? I did stop in the Monterey area. And one of the people that you saw in the area was Matthew McCartney, right? Yes. And did he live in Seaside then? Hang on a second, I can't remember hearing this before. Well, I, I, I don't think I've heard Nermi question her about it. And I do think it was brought up in previous testimony witness testimony so and I don't think she told I mean, could be wrong there's been so much evidence in this trial you know we we have forgotten some of it haven't we yeah we have but I'm pretty sure I mean this is new to me I didn't know that she saw Matt in Monterey on her way to kill Travis wow I believe he lived in Pacific Grove and that's the same or Monterey I mean the border is like they were right next to each other and so, you actually stopped to see him back on June 3rd of 2008, right? Yes. And in fact, you spent the night with him June 2nd to the morning of June 3rd, right? Yes, I crashed on the floor. Come on, love, pull that you're the one. Sure, you crashed on the floor. But you spent the night with him, right? Not with him, no. Okay, you spent the night at his apartment, right? Him and his roommate, yes. 
Well, with regard to a nickname, in this case, um, as Meatloaf once said, two out of three ain't bad. Okay, he, he and his roommate had an apartment. You spent the night there, correct? Um, it was like a house. I stayed the night there in the room that they shared. In the house, they had a room together, both of them, right? Yes. And you stayed in the same room with these two individuals, right? Yes, on the floor. All right. And the three of you were in the room, though, is the point, then, right? Yes, when we slept, yes. And you, you guys went to sleep around midnight, and you got up at what time the next morning, which would have made it the third. What time did you get up? I don't know what time we went to sleep, and I woke up sometime in the morning. And did he go with you to see Mr. Brewer or not? No. And so you, after seeing him, though, there, you parted ways, and you left, right? And went to Salinas, right? Um... Yes, I did. Yes, I went to Salinas. Pardon? I went to Salinas. And how far is Salinas from Pacific Grove, Seaside, Monterey, whatever the area is? How far is it? My recollection is that it's between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on the traffic. And you were going to, you were sort of detouring to Salinas for some cosmetic work, right? Well, I had to go to Salinas anyway to get on the road because I have to take Highway 1 South. I mean 101, excuse me, South. But you did go, when you went to Salinas, you did get some cosmetic work, right? Yes, my nails. Right, and you said it took a long time, right? Yes. And what kind of place was that in Salinas? It was at a strip mall. Cucumber water for customer only. Um, somewhat. What was the name of it? How about that? Oh, I don't know. It was one of those little operations where people are just coming and going, there's a long wait. And they only do nails, according to you there? It looked like they did pedicures also. I don't remember if there was hair or not, but just definitely nails and feet. But, but it could have been a place, a salon, where they also did hair, right? It might have been. And do you remember the name of this place at all? No. Go world. What time did you get to Salinas? I don't remember. And how long were you in Salinas? A few hours. I don't remember. I know that I wanted to get on the road, but... So what time did you get on the road? Uh, it was still light out, but I don't remember the time. This was after you had been over to Mr. Brewer's house, right? Yes. And this is where she bought the first gas can. Yeah, she bought it in Salinas just after she went to Daryl Brewer because he gave her two. You were there for a time, and then you left Mr. Brewer's house, right? Yes. And then you went back to return something, right? I Yeah, I, if I remember from his recollection, I, rem I kind of remember it. Well, I, I'm not asking for his. I'm asking for your recollection. Do you remember coming back and giving him something? <coughs> I remember... I don't actually remember it. Then I don't want you to tell me if you don't remember anything. Yeah. Judge? Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Monday, 1030. Please remember the admonition. Have a nice weekend. You are excused. Please be seated. The record will show the jury has left the courtroom. Ms. Arias, you may step down. Counsel, anything else for today? Right. Thank you. Well, hell, people. Yeah. Well, my God, what do you think of that? What a ride. Yeah, what a hell of a first day that was. Bloody roller coaster, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, just as, as you know, I pointed out a couple of times during this video, the complete contrast in styles between Nermi and uh, and Martinez and the way he peppered her, not giving her time to think. Um, I don't think he was overly aggressive. I think that will probably come later. But he was kind of, he towed the line if he didn't cross it. Yeah, but she's uh, really starting to be evasive now. Yeah, and I think she was, she went, you know, back to her cell that night and thought, this ain't going to be so easy. This guy's a bloody terrier, you know. And he's he's like a lot of terriers, you know. Once he's got hold of something, he, he will let go. He won't let go. You can't even pry his jaws open. So, 
you know, we are, we are looking forward to more of the same in part 26, aren't we? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. This this day actually was... It was, frustra- it was frustrating in parts, wasn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, the way she avoided answering questions or pretending yeah. she couldn't remember anything. And was being pedantic about yeah. the answers and stuff like that. Yeah, it was infuriating, but in many other ways, just seeing him peck holes in her and, as we say, peel these veneers back. These, you know, it's been very rewarding. Um, so we thank you all for being on the ride with us so far. Um, we will be back with part 26 as soon as we can. Please keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, please do carry on leaving us your comments. Uh, drop us a like. Subscribe to us if you're not subbed. We got, you know, we're carrying on this series to the end. Yeah, aren't thank, we? thank you to our coffee supporters and our youtube fam yep um as always they get early access because they support us they've had this for a few days um so you will already see quite a few comments underneath that that is our youtube fam and our coffee fam and you know they get first dibs at this yeah so thank you guys thank you so much for supporting us um and thank you to youtube and odyssey all you guys that you know, continually send us good wishes and, and great vibes. We really do appreciate it. And it keeps us going, doesn't it? And insightful comments. Very insightful comments, yeah. So, what more can we say? But we will see you very soon for, for part 26. We will. Take care. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. And as we always say, one, one love, love from, from Macclesfield. Macclesfield. Bye. Bye.